Ouch. Oh. Get your weight up, baby. FOA, all the way. FOA Customs and Gear. Custom tackle and fishing gear at an affordable price. Veteran owned, small business, located in South Carolina. Get all your fishing needs at www.foacustomsandgear.com. And boom, boom, bam, we're live. Good morning, everybody. How's Good morning, it going, y'all? Let's see. Oh, man, it's supposed to be 68 today. Yes. There we go. That sounds like a beautiful day. Hey, we got that 922 Crepe Barbecue guy out in chat out there. I've heard some things about that guy. I, I thought you blocked him. I tried to, but he keeps finding his way back in like a bad penny, I guess. We got the two oh. stands fishing family member Wabash Nate out there. How's it going? Catfishing Ed J. Welcome, welcome. Uncle Jeep's out there. Uncle Jeep, I know, has got to be tired from all the multiple channel scrolling that he did, or scrolling, trolling that he did yesterday. Oh, he right ought to be a professional. Right? Like, <laughs> Bugman22 is out there. How's it going, Bugman? Bugman was going to try to bring Pops in today, but it's a little windy out there. I don't blame him for that. Uh, Lisa Elliott, good morning, good morning. Great to see you, as usual. 37 awesome people. Lucky Ronnie, how's it going? Uh, let's see. David Ogden, welcome in. Dave B., Northern View Outdoors, great to see you. Gills and Grills, bunch of tired people this morning. <laughs> a lot of people, I see a lot of people. There's Rhonda Fishing for Whiskers, happy stand day. Hope everyone's having a great day. Catch fish with us, how's it going? Uh, asking how the wind over there, Bobby. Right now, it's gusting about eight, nine mile an hour. <laughs> Bobby is uh, control He's muting, unmute, mute, unmute, just to talk. So that should tell you how the wind is. Uh, there's Pontoon Jody out there. How's it going, Jody? Miss Place Country Girl. Great to see you. 37 awesome people out there watching Uncle Jeeps there. That's right. Don't say coffee too loud. You're going to make Rhonda make another pot, especially since uh, 922 is the big coffee drinker, too. Oh, I... Lucky Ronnie said he just let a pig go. That must be the picture that I got. We'll share that picture out in a minute. <laughs> 922. He's as bad as his coffee as I am with the Mountain Dew. <laughs> Yeah, it ain't loaded with there. caffeine or alcohol. I don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Nightbot says, I wonder what Jeep likes better, bacon or trolling? Hmm, I wonder. Gills and Grills saying wind was awful yesterday. Uh, Gills and Grills, Terry Rose does the uh, bank fishing online tournament on uh, through Facebook. So that is going on right now this weekend. You hear Josh uh, Thompson, Thompson Outdoor More, talking about that a lot. So we're going to try to uh, get that one promoted a little bit better for next time. So anybody, any bank fishermen out there that want to join, it's, I think it's a $25 entry fee. It goes from Friday to Sunday, the big fish. There's three winners, one each for cat, uh, Channel Cat, Blue Cat, and Flathead. Up, oh, stand three just said he made a pot of coffee to find out that he has no more creamer. That's just sacrilegious. That's wasting <laughs> a good cup of coffee. <laughs> that is the worst. 
Well, I, I can either confirm or deny that we may be able to help him out. Speaking of speaking of Josh Thompson. That road. Oh, oh Bobby's back. Two one sevens out there. Good to see you. Palmetto Cat says I'm cooking bacon now. Hey. Well, I... Correro Bagres out there. I guess he'd been blocked from Jody's channel. What do you do now? Or she pop tarts you? <laughs> I think it was a pop tart situation. I think it's fixed. <laughs> 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 The expressions that we have in the catfish community, if uh, nobody was watching, if nobody, you know, if you hadn't watched before, you'd be like, what in the blue heck are they talking about? <laughs> Just like uh, fishizzle was the big terms yesterday during the uh, last of the tournament. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unless I get fishizzled right at the end. <laughs> Yeah, it was a tough, uh, tough bite yesterday. Watching the tournament, Uncle Jeep says he's gonna drive all the way from uh, Arizona to South Carolina to have some bacon. <laughs> Our good friend River Cat Tackle out there. Mister John's in there. I haven't even looked at chat. Yep, John's in there. That is uh, anywhere, just like the other online tournaments. You just got to send the picture, send the picture in. Except I think I think they go by weight. Lisa's like, come on, nine two two. You are our only hope today. We may have some other anglers coming in. <laughs> That's funny. You can say you got pop tarted, and we all know it has nothing to do with the pastry. <laughs> well, it started out that way, but <laughs> surely T is in there. Kind of has something to do with pop tart. I yeah. saw that, Kevin. We're gonna we'll get and some me, of that. Me and our boy Dom's gonna have to have a talk. They look <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good catch, Bobby. Good catch. Josh says he finally caught a fish without Shelby. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Fishing with Jeff Beals out there. Bobby's got to be careful. He's not, that wind is gusting pretty good. He doesn't got the weight behind him like I do. He, he you might see him flying across the screen. <laughs> Lead in my boots. Keeps me on the ground. <laughs> there you go. That's right. As you can see, we do have spots available for stand day. It's funny because we were we were uh, getting to the point where it was like a full screen. Oh, I missed what Lisa made. Biscuits and gravy, all right. Well, biscuits and gravy, all right. Well, that's it for today. I'll see you all later. Uh, Lisa and them are not that far away, so... <laughs> Well, if you want creamer, we do have creamer. Josh is saying, I got coffee and creamer, bacon, egg, cheese, biscuit. All this biscuit talk is making me starving.
I could go for a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit, one of them big cat head biscuits like that. That's right. <laughs> Gonna be 80 today. Let's see. All right, so we got that. Let's take a look at this here. Of course, this weekend was the uh, Fishathon. I think that went extremely well. Six hundred dollars raised for uh, veterans, and I believe half went to Camp Centurion. Three hundred Camp Centurion and three hundred to uh, Operation Vets with Nets. This is the old one. So there we go. There's the score. Mark, catfish and crappies out there. How's it going? <laughs> I'm telling you. That's right. If you're going fish, take the family with you. But here we have the. Uh, this is current standings right now with two tournaments done. Parker Pursuits in the lead, 397. Team My Bad Dude, second, 396. Trophy Seekers, 390. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a little bit different results yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Dominic... Uh, Ended up flipping the boat yesterday. The most important part is he is okay, and he does have the boat. Uh, he lost all of his stuff, though. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that throughout the week. Uh, the good thing was he had on his life jacket. Uh, bad thing was is maybe it was uh, not the right situation to be in. Mark saying, I think I'm going to go catch some bluegill from my bait tank in a few. Great to see Mark in, as always. 60 awesome people out there watching. Now, not to jinx Bobby or anything. Not, uh -oh. not to jinx Bobby or anything, but uh, you have been catching fish the past couple of shows. Yeah. <clears throat> I figured I did well last, last week here, so... I'll give it about an hour here. The bays are, I can get back in the bays now. So, still can't get, I don't, I don't know how these guys launched without getting wet because ramp's still underwater. <laughs> well, if they got, is there, there's more than one ramp around there, I would imagine, or is it a smaller lake? Uh, there's three ramps, and if this one's underwater, the rest of them are because they're all two. <laughs> <laughs> but, some guys are more dedicated than I am. I ain't getting wet. You got to go sit out in the flying around the lake in the bass boats. There's a C. Guerrero Bagre saying, come on, 922. They got face in you. They got face in you. Uh-oh. All this biscuits. Oh. Oh. Oops. Rookie move. <laughs> well, we're all rookies. <laughs> I, it's amazing the things that, uh, you know, I, I look back and how long I've been doing this now and still do a dumb thing every now and then. Oh. 
Yeah, I've already got a toad of trash picked up around here. It is. Yeah. It just irritates me. There has been probably more spots lost over that right there than anything else. Well, the state used to leave uh, trash cans. Uh, DNR used to have trash cans out here. Yeah. Well, they took them away because nobody would use them. So. Yeah, that that is what boggles me. Trash can 25 feet away, and they'll throw trash on the ground. And then wonder why there's no fit, no bank spots anymore. There's Stewart out there. And Jay Fisher Maniac, what's up? He said, that looks like a good spot. It does, it does. Last, was it last week or the week before that you got the three, uh, three nice channels? Last week. Yeah, last week. Uh, Josh Thompson saying, well, why don't we why don't we do what we normally do? Nine two two. Let them know where you're at and what you're using. Well, I'm at Tappan Lake in Harrison County, Ohio. Uh, it is, if I remember right, still the <laughs> longest lake in the state of Ohio. It's nine and a half miles long. The widest part, I think, is a mile. Several bays. Uh, I'm using frozen shad for bait because I was too lazy to get out of bed this morning and catch fresh. So, <laughs> uh, and of course, I got my RCT Ancient Mariner reel rod and reel combo on the left. My pops rod, which is a Shakespeare signature rod in the center and then just my cheap walmart uh i think it's a real tree cat rod on the right so. there you go there you go and there's you know we talk about it all the time that there's uh probably the old ugly stick has probably caught more fish than any other rod out there probably the real i'd say probably a zebco 33 old zebcos have caught more fish than any other reel out there to probably day, uh, I think. and what do you think bobby day, i'd say oh, oh go ahead uh to this day i think zepco is probably still the most caught fish rod yeah. and reels and i would say by far probably the uh, night crawler has caught more fish than any other bait single bait out there i would I would uh, venture to say that we're, well, night, worms. We'll just put worms. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Most people get the red wigglers unless they're fishing for bigger fish. But. Team Snag and Whiskers. Dustin is out there saying, let's go, Ancient Mariner. NJ Fisher Maniac. Put a, put a three and a half pounder on the bank uh, last week. So see what she does this week. Lucky Ronnie's uh, got another fish in the yak. Let me check that pit. I'm probably going to lose my audio for just a second. I've gotten a nice, of a nice fish. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, hey, Jay, buddy, good to see you again. Good to see you back in chat. And then, of course, there's Jeff. Hey, Jody. Dustin. Josh. Let's see. Oh, hey, Mark. I, he I heard him saying that. I just didn't know which Mark he was talking about. No web zone, dummy! No web zone! Sorry, guys. Yeah, probably blows your ears out. Uh. Wow.
I don't know if Nightbot is being nice to me or being sarcastic. Probably both. <laughs> Justice. <clears throat> He's back far too far for my camera to see, but DNR just pulled him over. Yes. Hey, 217. Rhonda, how you doing, sweetie? Hey, JG. Yeah, he's probably trying to find the surgeon. Oh, uh, I said the S word. Did somebody say Sturgeon? Oh, dang it. He heard me. <laughs> now, I had gotten a picture. We saw Lucky Ronnie out there. Said he got another one in the boat. He sent me a picture of a nice blue cat that he let uh, he had gotten and then released. I was trying to get it loaded because I sent to Messenger, so I don't have that on my Shooter, so I was trying to send it from there to my email. Fifty. You just missed me yelling at the boat blowing through a no wake zone. I heard, I heard, and then uh, <laughs> karma happened, and he got pulled over. Yep. I hope they sighted him. Especially when they see somebody sitting there fishing. Uh, you can see the, well, I don't know if you can or not. Yeah, you can see the no wake zone boys right there in front of my rods. Dustin said he's stepping away for a bit. He'll be back. Ronnie said it was 39 inches. It's, and it looked pretty good, pretty fat too, so. I've seen somebody else caught a 61 uh, pounder. Thing looked bigger than 61 pounds. <laughs> well that was like the uh stand three got a 70 last week yeah last week and it was like four foot long and fat it looked to be way heavier than that but that one was 44 that's a that's that's a big fish no matter where you're at What? Hey, it could be a two pounder and you got me beat. I ain't never caught a blue. I'm going to try to remedy that this year. The one you just caught was 39. That's, that's, I'd take that any day of the week and twice on stand day. A, four, a 40, uh, 40 plus and a 39. Still another 40, so two 40 pound fish. Any day of the week, I would take that. 202, what's happening, buddy? Get your butt out to the doctor and start fishing. I need, I need some help. Let's see, I don't know if Rhonda's in there. If she can. Hey, there's Steve Ransom. How's it going? Oh, yeah, I guess I should have read the next one. He's ready. <laughs> well, I think you I think you talked him into it. I think you talked him into it. All right, Ronnie. Congratulations. I think Ronnie and uh Stan Three are in the same one of the tournaments together, I think.
Man, something's wrong with chat. Why is that? There's Sampy there's not, up there. There's, there's somebody missing. Not. Uh, my instigator's not in here. It's early yet. It's early. It should be here. <laughs> Maybe they're out there. Fishing. She is. <laughs> Ah, uh, see there? <laughs> it's funny how it's like uh, it, you mentioned something and YouTube just kind of boop, puts it out there. Hey, Lisa, how you doing, sweetie? So, we were just talking about you. <laughs> I was saying all good stuff, of course. Now, Bobby, I don't know. I'm gonna have to get in touch with uh, uh I'm gonna have to get in touch with Timmy, make sure he's all right. Yeah, I haven't talked to uh Dominic or uh Tanya yet, but uh he did he is okay and the uh somebody needs to get a list of what all he lost so we can help him out. Absolutely. There's there's smoke out there. Potomac River Monsters. How's it going, my friend? Good to see you. Stream me up, Scotty. Did you see the link? Uh, 202. Put it there. Chat's going now, though. <laughs> Rhonda, if you could drop the link in chat again, the StreamYard link, that'd be good. Rhonda said it's sad. I, when, he said inst when he said instigator, I thought he was talking about Aaron, <laughs> not Burrito. Uh-oh. Man, you boys looking up below here, What's going on? <laughs> Benny! <laughs> you know, most competitions, people are like, oh, man, I don't want anybody. Bobby's like, man, I hope some other people show up. The pressure to catch a fish is too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to put no pressure on him today. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> hey, I just did a cast net, and, man, I got some of the biggest gizzard chat off that dam behind me that you ain't never seen, buddy. Oh, my we goodness. Big, we got small ones. Now, I'm going to be in the same spot that I was in the tournament yesterday, and I managed to squeeze one little catfish out in the six-minute mark. Six minutes to go, and I pulled one out of there. <laughs> and, uh, we were using all frozen bait yesterday, and, you know, my mind gets to clicking, and I'm like, you know what, I wonder what happen if we go back to the same spot, throw that cast in it, get some fresh shad, and try this again. You know what there I'm saying? There you go. I'm just hard-headed, don't want to move nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this camera turn around. I got the rods and the holders, but I still got to rig them all up, bait up. Man, let's have some fun today. What do you say? Oh, sounds good to me. Sounds good to me, Danny. All right. Let me get to work. I'll be right with you. All right. <laughs> let's get it done, Danny. Oh, excuse me. Well, there we go. We got the we got the rod set low in the rod holders day as low as we can get them because uh, we do have a bit of wind and the lower I can keep those 16 footers down, they're not whipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get up to you, six. You, I don't care how thin it, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how thin it, it is. Fire, you're going to get every bit of it. <laughs> it gets 16 foot in the air and there's wind and it's going to be moving. <laughs> All right, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> There's chat out there. Fields to water. Great job with the tournament this weekend. It was the Fishathon happened yesterday. Uh, congratulations to Team My Bad Dude, the Fishizzle and Bobcat, 
And uh, big shout out to Chad. Great job. Another uh, very successful tournament. Raised six hundred dollars for veterans. So that is awesome. Uh, he's big as a thought, but he ain't bad. Well, there you go. Do the crappy jigs out for a little bit, and we got supper for tonight, too. Oh, there you go. I can He's go for some of that. I am eating him tonight. He's packed on ice right now. Enough about that. Let's get some bait in the water. And here is the uh, FOA, the Live Fishing Tournament League. There's the bait rag. There's the tumblers. You can get them uh, at foacustomsandgear.com. You can use code 2 stands 10 to save you some money on those. Freddie is out of the state for the uh, week. So any, any orders from FOA that are placed this week will be going out next Monday. You know, we got them big ones, but let's throw some of these little ones on hold, man. Right there. That looks think, like a, uh, it, he's about uh, three and a half, four inches long, and I got a ton of those too. See that we, we never get those. A, oh yeah, I got plenty of them. Come up here, man. They're like all in this bucket. <laughs> <they're everywhere. laughs> that'd be quite the trip, Danny. That'd be quite the trip. It would definitely be worth the drive. That's for sure. Oh yeah, because you know we're going fishing. <laughs> Oh, there's a. Uh, fish and fever out there. Everyone's doing great. That's the that's the best news. Mom and baby sleeping right now. There you go. Old short river. Many things are slimy. Yeah, them gizzard chat can put a slime coat out there. That's for sure. I think I think yep. that's part of the reason they work fresh. They work uh, so well, but. but I mean, I I dumped them in here just through this. Uh, I got I keep a couple bags of this ice and I just throw it right on top of them. Yeah. But as soon as that cold hits them, man, they just start sliming up. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. And five, night bot is reminding everybody that. Fish and Fever has a second channel called Pond Fever. Check it out. Shirley T fished yesterday. Her and Jean. Great to see them out there. Oh. Uncle Jeep ah, says, Chad, I think you, think you have your Danny Stone noise filter turned up too high. <laughs> <laughs> There's Randy Gray Hair Spain out there. How's it going, Randy? Get hooked on Colorado Jay. Great to see you. Brito is saying that uh, Chad, that sounds like a user issue. <laughs> Right, JG rocks the world with a cowbell. Fish head video said I got skunk last three trips for catfish and carp, trying to decide what to fish for today. Well, sometimes four times is the charm. You never know. You never know. 70 awesome people out there watching. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Black Betty in the water.
That's just. That's right. There's FOA Customs and Gear. Code two stands ten. Any of the live fish and tournament league items that are bought, uh, percent of that will go back to the live fish and tournament league. And big shout out to the newest uh, new sponsors. Both sponsors were uh, Chris and Telly Lee. So the next tournament coming up for that. is the Iron Bait Live Challenge, April 27th, 6 p.m. Uh, and Live Bait Iron Challenge. Bait. What's up, Danny? You said, you said Iron Bait, man. I'm like, what, I gotta put like spoons and stuff on the hooks <laughs> and out there? Look. Now, the, uh, the next tournament, the Iron Cat Live Bait Challenge, there you go. At six o'clock at night. So hoping to put some flatheads in that tournament, it sounds like. So that should be a lot of fun. If anybody is not, if you're not signed up for that yet and you'd like to fish it, uh, you just got to contact myself. You can put it in chat today. Uh, myself, Chad, Brian, or Palmetto. And we can get you into that. You've got till next Saturday. <laughs> Bobby Lisa saying, uh, you know, you really won't need that dip net today. Nice try, though. <laughs> Right, Lucky Ronnie is back. There's our good friend, Small Water Charters out there. They had a, uh, from earlier today, the Three Amigos. Check that one out. 76 awesome people watching. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you coming in. Fish and Fever. Man, everybody's on 922. Tell Bobby this is a fishing show. Not an ad for Wrangler Jeans. <laughs> These are dickies, anyhow. <laughs> Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> 922 loves it when we give him crap. Royal, Rowdy Royal, how's it going? Great to see you. All 
there it is. We got 76 awesome people out there watching. Thank you, everybody. I'd say, and they are heading to the donkey land after lunch today. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> Excuse me. Austin is on fire today. He's saying, uh, man, with all that brush, is Danny is Danny fishing for rabbits? I'm not sure if it's rabbit season. Don't threaten Danny with a good time. It I would not be surprised he catches rabbit out there. I'm not Remember, we started the honorary point two two because of Danny. With uh, man, and that what was it? A stretch of a couple weeks, you caught a bullfrog, turtle, the alligator uh, turtle. Uh, a, a common snapper turtle, a, a soft shell turtle, alligator snapper turtle, bullfrog, uh, a salamander. <laughs> It was something then, else. I, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, and it was like bam, 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 bam. It was like within a couple of weeks of each other. And and during that time, I know you caught drum and uh, several other species of fish. <laughs> Kevin Prunka saying, good morning, America. And catfishing. That's right. Great to see you out there, Kevin. <laughs> I think Austin's getting sleep deprivation. He's saying, uh, don't be surprised if Danny reels in a homeless guy in all those bushes. <laughs> no, I generally go through and, and beat on the bushes with the rod and let them know I'm here. I don't want to surprise them. You know, you go around and you whack the limbs and stuff and, <laughs> and make sure nobody's in there. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to bother those guys and surprise them, so. <laughs> <laughs> we actually started to have a few around here now where we didn't have them really before now i've seen a few tents out there along the river well they they, they always say the same thing hey man you got another one of those mountain dews and i'm like you know what yes sir i do <laughs> Here today. Yesterday, this place was elbow to elbow, but apparently, they're afraid of a little bit of wind. Apparently, wind. What's that? Yeah, never heard of. It. <laughs> There's our good friend fishing and cooking with Mike Chavez. Howdy, hi there, friends and neighbors. Well, welcome in, Mike. Thank you, thank you, Shirley T. Small water try to sing, baby, baby, quiet. We hunting wabbits. Duck season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Fire. Bow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away there. I got carried away. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Little little cartoon flashback in my head there. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame you can't already see those anymore. Not like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> those were the days. You, you know, they're they're considered too violent. Yet you've got uh, you know, Call of Duty and every other video game out there with uh oh, what's the other one? Grand Theft Auto that that even young kids play. But you can't watch Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, if uh, if you don't want to pay the prostitute in Grand Theft Auto, you just set her on fire and run over with the car. <laughs> you know, good, wholesome entertainment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can't have a hunter shooting a duck or a rabbit. Uh, let's see. David Ogden saying anything over 15 miles per hour is a wind. The rest is just a breeze. Well, there it's you go. Be one of those days where the uh, rods are just bouncing, bouncing, and the only way you know you got a fish is if you get an absolute takedown. Because there's no mistaking that with the wind. Yeah. Oh, man, I would love to see one of those. Love to see Black Betty out there just goes right on over. Yeah, me too. I ain't seen it in about two months. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen Yeah, I, I did. I saw it once or twice this year so far. Uh, that's right, Burrito. Thompson's Outdoors and More. Three miles east of Watts Bar Dam for all your for all your your tackle and bait needs and more <coughs> gonna put the roof on the bathroom today need a nap finish fish 6 p.m to 7 a.m there you go we got 73 awesome people out there watching thank you everybody for coming in uh burrito is saying uh Austin, if I don't give Bobby crap, he will think I don't like him anymore. <laughs> that well, is I very true. I must have missed her comment here. Oh, here we go. She said, uh, "Bobby looks like Bobby's moving vaca vacations." Yeah, you're, you're. I need a vacation. That sounds like a good idea. Bobby's moving locations. Ain't gonna make any difference for him though. Ouch. Oh. 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 Might be true, but geez. Ugh. Yeah, I got over here. I got over here to the river early this morning, and I drove around for about an hour and a half. And every place I went to, there there are like log jams against the bank that go out 20, 30 feet from the bank. I mean, that's on the main river. And if you hooked anything decent. There's no way you're dragging it over top of 30 feet of logs to get it back to the bank. So uh, that's the main reason we came back to this spot. It's just you can't get to the river right now. Yeah. And uh, Jerry Parker, that, that crazy freaking nut, he's fishing probably one of the most dangerous spots around here uh, today. He is up on the uh, Missouri and Mississippi River confluence right now. He uh, he called and checked on him a while ago, and he's he's getting all set up. I don't know what he's got planned today, but he's definitely going to fish the, uh, the Missouri and Mississippi River confluence. Well, that sounds like a uh, that sounds like a pretty uh, pretty busy area right there. That's a uh, two two. Big rivers coming together. Yeah, right there in St. Louis, too. Wow. Yeah, the, the last time he fished there, I mean, there's y'all, I don't know if y'all heard about it or not. He caught a little video catfish that uh, that bottomed out a scale or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think anybody heard about it. I don't think so either. Uh, let's I think see. Parker's got a billboard up on the Interstate 55 holding that fish up. <laughs> uh, nine, man, fishing fevers on fire out there today. He's got the fever. It says, I think 922 is going to move locations. There's no fish at Walmart, but there are Wrangler jeans there, just saying. Uh, Stan 3 says, that's, that's going to be a pretty fancy bait shop that Josh has now. That bathroom's got a roof on it. Uncle Jeep is saying that's not a bathroom he's working on. It's a stink bait <laughs> collection facility. Oh, my God. Uh, 
Josh said, I fished tapping in my teens with a buddy. It's Clean Lake. Got Dustin joining us back. Incredible bulk is out there. Hello, hello. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Eliza, dear Eliza. Don Johnson's out there. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> also says i disagree us new wave dutch prefer to look at the clouds and stars when we use the restroom josh thompson's gonna call it the stinky shack <laughs> oh the stink shack there you go The Sting Shack is a little place where. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, talking, about the, talking about having a fishing spot all yourself. Yesterday, that parking lot was full. I mean, you, you, we had to find a parking space. And today, I'm the only truck there. Wow. Yeah, I think the wind must have scared them all, Danny. They don't like the wind. But I tell you what, those skipjack fishermen and the shad netters, they're missing out on a great day because I threw that net one time and filled that cooler half full with one throw. And the wow. skipjack are up there that day on popping. It's crazy, man. I figured they'd be out here just swarming that place. Let's see. Uh, Don Johnson, yes, Dominic made it home. Uh, he is good, and I guess they got the boat flipped back over. He's got the boat, but uh, everything he had with him is gone. Now, was, was his boat just leaking, or did he, like, get a wave come over the side? What exactly happened? Because uh, there were people telling me that he had... Uh, water in the bottom of the boat pretty much uh, right after we launched yeah that's uh i don't i haven't spoke to them myself and i don't think uh we've gotten the exact whole story yet but it looked like uh when palmetto went back to look at it looked like he was trying to bail out water and there was a bunch of water in the boat like a yeah. bunch of water so i think it was taken on water and then it kind of just got some uh, water over the top, over the side, and it just kind of got worse from there, and he ended up turning it over. At least that's what well, was said. Kentucky Dam, I mean, uh, all of us around this area, we all go there, you know, can skip that stuff. Me and Richard Clark, Jerry Parker, Josh Dunnigan, we all go there. And, uh, that, that, that dam ain't no joke, man. The water coming out of that thing, whoo, i tell you what, I don't know if I would put a, a small boat in there. Yeah. I mean, I, I might have when I was younger, but I sure wouldn't now. Well, and you know, that brings up a, that brings up a point, Danny, is that uh, 71 awesome people out there watching. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. We got three people over on Facebook. Uh, is that, you know, when you're on the bank and it's windy, that's annoying, but it's not really a safety factor as much. But you get out there in the boat, and uh, even in a big boat, that wind can be a very, very dangerous situation. So we, you know, oh, Dominic definitely. being, you know, Dominic being used to bank fishing, uh, you think I've fished in plenty of wind before. You don't really think of it as much, you know, when you uh, uh, doing the boat because you're used to fishing in it. Uh, Brian says he got swamped by another boat. Yeah, that makes sense. Lost all his gear. So, you know, I'm sure more of us will be talking to him, and I'm sure he'll come out, uh, you know, make a statement what happened. And 
you know, but uh, let it be a, you know, we can all use it as a learning opportunity and just a reminder of how, you know, we love this sport and uh, we love being able to go out there and doing it. But, uh, you know, you know, this time of year, there is going to be those other boaters out there. It's just like driving sometimes. You know, I'm not I'm not so much worried about the person I'm driving with. It's the other people out there that that you got to watch out for. And, and uh, yeah, especially if you're in a, if you're in a smaller boat, I mean, that's just one more thing you got to look out for in a smaller boat is bigger boats. And uh, it's like, you know, dude, I'm always worried about the, the kayakers because a lot of people, they're not everybody now, but you get some boaters, man. And they have total disregard for anybody else on the water. And I'm, they'll come in there right next to you. And, and if you're in a kayak or a small boat, dude, they can mess you up in a heartbeat before you even realize what's going on. They don't yeah, absolutely. And uh, man, Fever is on fire today. He's saying, uh, you know, we were saying about another boat. Another boat is... Uh, what what got dominic and that's what brian was saying so austin saying why'd you do that brian <laughs> <laughs> we know it wasn't brian his boat isn't running right now <clears throat> thought y'all were friends <laughs> yeah glad he's saying i don't think he'd uh i don't think he could run that trolling motor at kentucky dam i really just don't think he could pull that off <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Stan three saying not everyone with a boat should be driving one. People don't understand. Just to start out with, people don't understand how to trim up or down, or even know what it is. Yeah, that was one of the first lessons I learned back when I was uh, running the boat on the river. I was like, you know, sometimes this thing goes fast, sometimes it don't, and or, or it lift up in the water and played out real easy, and sometimes it won't. And, and uh, I got to talking to an old guy, and he goes, dude, are you trimming your motor? And I go, what? I like, take a knife and shave something off the side of it? Or what? <laughs> uh, let's see. Yep. Austin agrees. Some people shouldn't be allowed to drive the truck that gets the boat to the water in the first place. And people have no respect anymore. They don't care if you're already in a spot. They'll just come up and anchor right where you are fishing. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I think with a lot of the boaters and stuff is they just have no clue as to what the other people are doing. When do you, you know, ever? Yeah, that's true. You know? But like you don't uh, know what somebody else is thinking, ever. This is true, this is true. But like, you know, if you were to pull up on you or Bobby right now and you see the poles, the big tall poles and stuff, and all right, you know, they're they're fish and they've got their their you know, they, their lines aren't sitting right by the shore, their lines are you gotta expect their lines to be cast out. So you, you know to go out around them. And people that don't know anything about fish and have no clue, they just, they see their pole and, and think that they don't have any clue about where their line is. Yeah. No, I, did a, um, I did a, a, a live stream and then did a production video of it. Uh, just a few months ago, I was fishing not far from here and had the, all my lines out. And here comes a boat and he's dragging baits through there. And yeah, he started pulling all my rods started going over. I just grabbed him, started setting the hook, and and he started screaming, "Fish on!" Oh and my I was lord! On the bank having a field day with it, I was laughing. I was like, "Oh man!" And he reeled up, and it was Black Betty. He had my trick three way rig on his boat. He goes, "What's this?" And I go, "That's my line. Throw it back in, please." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, no clue. Just that's just. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, and I'm sure seven twelfths of the boaters out there have never taken the safety course and don't have the license to drive. Absolutely. You know, it's like you drive, a, to drive the car to get your license. You got to pass the test, it, the driving test. And I know it, it's, uh, for boaters, it would be too much. It would, 
the cost involved, it, it, I'm sure, is the big reason, but. But anyways, we got 70 awesome people out there watching this old man bitch about people out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it, 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 he, yeah, here, if you catch a fish. Oh, my goodness. The boats will come right over. And if they don't, they'll just come over and mark the spot and then go. Oh, yeah, I actually had a boat angler tell me that one time. He said, he said, bank anglers are an excellent source of information. He said, they'll sit out there, you know, a little bit offshore and watch the bank and see who's catching uh -huh. and go through there and mark those spots. You know, I'm like, man, I don't, you know, you got all those graphs, charts, and gizmos, and gadgets, and, <laughs> I mean, leave the bank anglers alone, man. Yeah, there's only so many spots you can fish from the bank. Why would a boat angler? Because it's all yeah. about catching the fish. To, to a lot of people, that's all it's about. Yeah. You know? I mean, we all love catching fish, but, uh, I mean... You don't want to become that person that is, uh, you know, that is so obsessed with catching fish that you turn into a cutthroat person too. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. To me, you're you're taking so much away from it when you become that person. Let's see. Yes, and the 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 boater safety course is mandatory here, but you know, nowadays you can just you take it on a you can take it on your phone. And uh, they give you the question, and you scroll back through and answer it. Scroll back through and answer it. There's no – most people that are taking it, they just take it to uh, – it's just a money game because then you got to pay for – you pay for the license, and then you pay to take the course, and you don't really learn anything. You just uh, – you take it on your phone and – you just go back and look through the answer and I'm sure, or they, or you have somebody else take it for you. And that's what they're doing. Uh, just a quick public service announcement. People, if you take line off your reel, throw it in the trash. Don't leave it on the banks for the birds and other animals get tangled in. That's right. Yeah, I've even got tangled in a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've done that before. Yeah, I was walking down the bank, and they said my lick feet are all wrapped up and tied up together, and I couldn't get it loose. I had to get a knife out and cut it off my boot. Uh, Dustin and I, uh, we rescued a goose last year with, uh, and it wasn't monofilament. It was braid that was wrapped around this poor goose and cutting through his Ooh, skin. and getting out of that. <laughs> Nope, we had to grab him and hold him down, and we cut it all off. And he uh, he was really uh, – that goose was thankful. <laughs> I know you know the whole thing about, you know, animals are animals, but uh, he was really – he was really – you could tell he kept looking back, and he was glad to be back out there. We'll just put it that way. Uh, Tess and Marillo is in the house. How's it going, Marillo? Tests and certifications are one thing, but common sense is another. There it is. Common that's sense just, ain't so common anymore. That's just it. And, <laughs> and I don't get it because anything you ever want to know, even in today's technology and everybody's phones and stuff right there in your hand, anything you want to know, that information is right there at the tip of your fingers. Absolutely. Uh, to walk around not knowing anything is just beyond ridiculous to me. Wow. Man, I, I, I don't know if y'all can see chat or not, but they are just on fire out there today. I'm not sure what's going on, what happened, but, you know, Nightbot said, hey, Brian B is here. I wonder who's going to fish first, Brian B or Stan 2? So then, of course, Stan 3 says, uh, well, Stan 2 and Brian could have a fish off. 
First to catch fish wins. Might take all year as much as they fish. Or as little as they fish. Wow. <coughs> now, I, I know you guys were busy on your channel uh, yesterday during the tournament. But uh, my buddy, the <coughs> conservation agent here, Chris Barnes, a real good friend of mine, uh, he stopped by and checked on me. He said, you in another tournament? I'm like, yeah. And uh, he was asking me if uh, any of the people around here were with me. And I told him, you know, Richard Cluck and uh, Matt from one of the outdoors, they're right down the street there. You know, I threw them on the bus, dished them out. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, and while he was here, I got to talk to him. I said, you know what? I do have a question for you. And I told him, I said, you know, you know hypothetical situation. Uh, we've been getting on some bigger fish lately. So if we get in a situation where we catch a possible state or God forbid a, a, a world record fish, I said, the thing about our community is we are very adamant about, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a record or not. If that fish's life is in danger, it goes back in the water. And I asked him, I said, now, if, if I call you and tell you I've got a possible state or world record, uh, and I got that fish tied up in the water, keeping him alive. I said, do you have the capabilities to handle that? He said, absolutely. He said, you call. He, he, I got his personal number. He said, you call me 24-7, 365 days a year, buddy. He said, if I'm not coming, I'm sending somebody. They have a trailer with a tank on it that has pumps, aerators, oxygen, everything. Because uh -huh. they, they said they would love to... Uh, have somebody in Missouri catch the state record or the world record and be a part of that because, you know, we're going to video the whole thing and show the, the conservation department pitching in to, to get that fish weighed and certified and safely released back. So they actually have a trailer with a tank on it prepared for that situation. I did not know that until yesterday. Yeah, good luck with that in Ohio. The only way you get them to show up is call 1-800-POACHER. <laughs> wow. Well, like I said, you know, I've known this guy for a long that time. Fish with and, us. You, know, you kind of got the inside, you know, hookup. Yeah. That. Well, and, you know, well, that's where it, if you see them out there, uh, it doesn't hurt to talk to them. And, uh, you know, we made friends with a few over here. <laughs> You know we're by we're by salt water, <laughs> so I accidentally mislabeled uh, <laughs> game and fish department, or now it's the Virginia. No, now it's the uh, used to be the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries is what the game wardens were, and now it's the is it the DNR? Well, anyways, it was I had meant I had labeled them as uh, Marine Police because that's the salt water. And it wasn't. So <laughs> apparently his friends were making fun of him because they heard us talking about it. So they watch your lives. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, but if you're uh, you're doing things the right way, you're promoting the right stuff. Uh, they realize that. And from then on, you know, he he'd uh, uh, give us the wave and, he, you know, he checked our stuff. And and by watching and seeing how we are, he knows you know who we are and we're, we're doing the right things and uh if yeah, you make friends i mean I, I could never get away with anything if i wanted to like i said my, my uh my game warden here subscribed to my channel so you know i thought that was so cool when, when it, whenever he come up he said you got a channel yeah I, mean, I gave him a sticker and everything and he went on his phone and you know subscribed and he walked off and i go that could be the dumbest thing i've ever done in my life right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. JG, what's yeah, like, up, okay, buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah if I'm ever doing anything wrong, just check my channel, man. You got me. <laughs> yeah. Honest, sir. I didn't do it. I promise. Oh, yeah? What are you calling this? There is right no here? law against being crazy. There you go. Otherwise, uh, I'd have been arrested a long time ago. Stan 3 says, well, if they're watching, good. Why did they got six shock boats out there at one time shocking the river? That's right. Dustin and uh, Mike Chavez. It is the Marine, the one for the uh, 
Saltwater Marine Resource Commission, and the Freshwater is now Department of Wildlife Resources. Yes, DWR, yep. Well, good morning, JG. Good morning, peeps. What's happening? Looks like you uh, recovered from the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came in and uh, wife had a really nice dinner waiting on me when I got home, so I ate that and passed out. <laughs> that that wind will, that wind will take it out of you. That's for sure. Well, I mean, it's a lot. You know, you get out there and you know Tony Harrison is going to write the book, but I think I I gave him some more cliff notes yesterday. <laughs> And what happened? And what happened was, I think that'll be the name of the book. And what happened was, <laughs> so we're, um, but you know, it's good. I, you know, I was really glad to uh, land that fish there towards the end. You know, I was getting worried, but you get out. You know, you're out there by yourself. I mean, I'm in an 18 foot, you know, pontoon boat. I left the bend of me down. Uh, you know winds was gusting from i don't know 13 to 20 and it wasn't constant and it was changing directions so you know to get out there you know i threw out two six foot drift socks yesterday six foot now that's six foot across and round two wow. of them two of them and the boat was still going too fast it was like 1.9 2.0 I said, well, maybe you ought to be out here looking for another species besides catfish. <laughs> but that um, was nuts. It was nuts. And, you know, and then you, you, one of those things, you, you know, you try to spot lock or anchor up into a, a creek channel coming into the main channel, drop the baits down, <laughs> two, two cranks up, but you got to put your time in there. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're just waiting on fish to come by. And it got to the point where it was, you know, I'm running out of time here. We got to put some fish in the boat. And, you know, I made some adjustments and able to catch one. But then by that time I had 50 boats on top of me. I had jet skiers and boaters coming by my, coming by my boat yesterday within 20 feet. Yeah. Just no clue. No clue. Mm -mm. And you know, I mean, they wave at you like it's your best friend, you know? What in the world? <laughs> My wife's texting me. Jet skiers. Uh, <laughs> speaking of jet skiers. <laughs> there they come. <laughs> there they go. And Tony Harrison is, is is out in chat. Tony, drop the mic. Okay, yeah. That, there's, there's the official name of the book. What had happened was... That's right. All all we ask for is a uh, all we ask for is a uh 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 heck what do you call it a little uh, uh what in mem uh, uh gosh dang it you know when you have a book and you want to thank somebody and little if there's yeah. There's, oh there's yeah 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 book. cliff note yeah like the, a cliff note yeah. but just uh uh like yeah. hey thanks for staying whatever ah, the the joke was funny in here where's funny uh -oh. here we're going from here to here I lost the word. Wow. Somebody will know what hey, it's called out there. Hey, Danny, I'm supposed to ask you how to catch fish. <laughs> if I figure it out, I'll email you. <laughs> hey, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh. David Ogden saying, Danny needs to clear the brush. His poles are starting to blend in with it. <laughs> I know. It. I had to go over and chop some of them down a while ago. It was blocking out that uh, that river cat on that ancient mariner rod. It's green. The limbs are green. I'm like, where'd my rod go? <laughs> uh, look at there. We've done, we done chase JG away already. <clears throat> There's Lance. How's it going, buddy? That's Lance, my cool guy. The Hawaiian fisherman. Good to see Lance. Well, yep, yep. I think that's going to be a very, I think, I really do think Tony should do it. If you haven't heard Tony <laughs> with the what had happened was. <laughs> 
yeah, the I moon phase. I got a 12 foot Akuma rod off of Lance uh, at CatCon. He, he brought uh-huh. it over and gave it to me. And uh, I've caught a few fish on it, setting it out. But lately, I've been, uh, it, man, it makes a great snagging rod. That 12 footer is a perfect length for it. Oh, I and, bet. Uh, man, that, those carp hate that rod. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can get quite the swoop on it with a 12 foot rod, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I put out a video the other day of, of snagging a few of them. And uh, some guy wrote in comments, he said, uh, that, that's ridiculous using that long rod for snagging. And I'm like, uh, well, the contrary there, my friend, the longer that rod, when you swing it, the longer and uh, of a sweep you've got pulling it and more yeah. power. So you can bury that hook up in there. You try that with a Freddy rod, see what happens to you. Get you a five foot Freddy rod and try to go snagging. Yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, uh, your arm. <laughs> the only way I would want to snag with a Freddy rod is if it was something that, like, uh, you're on a wall and it's straight down, like running right under a dock, down. and you need to. That would be awesome. That would be the perfect snagging rod for that situation. Other than that, like you said, 10, 12 foot is probably about, you know, I think longer than that, and it's probably too hard to control. And uh, that's probably right about the optimum. That 10, 12 foot is probably perfect for that. Uh, well, you know. I'm waiting to yeah. see. If, uh, I'm going to have him uh, send me the video footage. Cause I asked him if he was going to make a video of it. And he said that uh, he would just send me the footage. But after the tournament yesterday, me and uh, Richard and Matt went up here to Spillway Dam. And we're throwing jigs and catching skipjack and stuff. Well, I didn't bring my uh, my uh, skipjack rod with me, but I have a survival kit underneath the seat of the truck. And in that <laughs> in that survival kit, I've got a dock demon, little bitty <laughs> tiny dock demon. It's got I don't know, a two or four pound test line on it. I don't know, but uh, I went over there and tied a jig on it. And got up on the dam and was vertical jigging that wall. And Richard has the video footage of it of me landing. Uh, I landed several. Uh, Huge white mass. They were like, you know, it were three to four pounds, and was laying them on that dock demon, vertical jigging that wall, and you'd see that dock demon just bent. I had the drag basically just opened up on it, because there was no way you were gonna be able to tighten it down. And he videoed that. He's gonna send it to me. I'm gonna try to make a video of that. It's pretty cool. And uh, Matt was wanting them for supper, so we packed them on ice and sent them back to Arkansas with him. There you go. Yeah, he drove. Uh, how long? Was, how long was that drive, Danny? For him, about three hours. Right around two, actually. Matt's about two hours away from me and Richard. Oh, okay. Hundred miles. Do you remember when? <laughs> Back in the day, I used to ride my horse to school. Yeah, those are good ones too. Those are good ones too. Pre pre. Uh, a preface, pre- oh my gosh, I can't even say it when Dustin's putting it right there. Come my prefaces? <laughs> prefaces, there you go, thank you. Are you talking about uh, <laughs> references for like where the quotes or the sayings came from? A reference? Cliff notes? Yeah. yeah they, it, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, you know how like in the beginning of the book it'll be like uh <laughs> Dedicated to all my crazy fish, fish and friends. That oh, yeah. yada. Hey, shade tree is out there. Lance McCool guy, white bass started running here. I'd love to catch some white bass. Man, they're fun to catch too. We don't really have that. We have the white perch here. Man, you get you get uh, catching white bass on top water jigs. Man, that's fun. We used to. Uh, you we get, uh, Go ahead, Dan. It, it, if we get totally desperate and neither one of us is catching fish, I'll give you two options, man. I can leave these rods out and walk back up to the dam. And we can either rig up a rod and catch some white bass and uh, skip jack. Or we can get that 12-footer out and snag a big old giant carp. But we'll have a fish on this show today. I promise you that. We'll get the point two two today. That The point two two might win it. <laughs> if, you, if you want the point two two today... I got you covered. Don't worry about it. We start running low on time. I'll take care of it. There you go, brother. Thank you. Thank you. That Danny, that Danny Stone, man. You, 
<laughs> I said, you, you, you take uh, Rod. He was, you know, snagging carp. And I mean, first cast, <laughs> too old, he snagged one. You know, you can't imagine how thick the water is with those things if he can do that. I mean, it's like, wow. Me and Richard came up through this inlet right here with his boat a few weeks ago. They blacked out the screen. They literally <laughs> blacked out the screen. Wow. No wonder, yeah, they wanna... won't, no wonder they won't let you throw them back. Or you, well, you can throw them back, but you got to kill them first. Oh. And that's part of yeah, your wildlife deal? Open. Do what? And that's the wildlife asking you to do that? They said, do not put those fish back in the water live. They will write you a ticket. Oh, wow. But I suggest to people, because... Uh, over at Kentucky Dam, where we go catch skipjack, most people catch them and just throw them up on the rocks in the bank. Now, the one thing about Kentucky Dam that I can't stand is the smell. All those oh, rotten so fish bad. everywhere, it's unbearable. And I tell people here, some of them throw them up on the bank and leave them. I'm like, dude, slit, the, slit his throat, blow the gill plates, whatever, bleed him out. Throw him back in the water. Something's going to eat him. Oh you know, yeah, but when you pile, you pile them up along the bank here. Yeah, you're gonna get raccoons and eagles and stuff. They cannot keep up with eating all that many fish if you're throwing hundreds of them up on the bank. You know, and it just gets really foul. The smell does. Josh Thompson in here saying his buddy would cast the line out, flip the bell, and toss the rod in the weeds. And when the weeds shake, started shaking, he. That man, he got a bite. I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh. Yeah, Lance, That's something I've never been able to understand. Uh, I can try to drag a line through these weeds along this bank, and I'll get hung up every time. But you can lay a rod down behind them bushes, and a fish will manage to drag that rod through them bushes and right into the water. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen you save. I've seen you save uh, several rods from going in the river. Oh yeah, absolutely. We had some skint knees and bruised elbows diving for rods. It's like uh, Randy, old gray-haired Swain, in here. He said, "Yeah, he caught fifty-seven on consecutive casts two years ago. That's a lot." Uh huh. Wow. Okay. Boy, I tell you what, I can only throw uh, uh, for just a little bit though. Because that is work. You talking about if you think skipjack and throwing constantly is hard work, try snagging, swinging that rod and throwing out there and swinging that rod. It's hard on your back. It's hard on your shoulders. Oh yeah, and I get out of breath. And that's uh, and I think you should do it when your back's at like uh, hurting like heck too. I mean, that's when you should start doing it when you when your back's hurting. Yeah. You know, it's all about it's all about your hips too. You I mean you got you got to turn with your hips and not your back. Mm -hmm. If you twist your back, yeah, it hurts worse. But if you, if you ever notice, I'll put that rod, uh, the, the it's got like a two, half, two and a half foot handle on it. Yeah. I'll put that handle against my leg when I'm doing that sweep, and it puts all the pressure on my inner thigh instead of yeah. my arms and my back. Yeah. Hey, 922, your biggest fans in Absolutely. here. 922, your biggest fans in here. Burrito catfishing lady says, Bobby, I told you moving locations wasn't going to help you out. That's your buddy. She's always harassing me. I time her out, but she I'm just, just get even. David Odkin in here said that uh, after four or five Asian carp, I have to take a break. And I think Danny's in the same boat with you there. But after about four or five casts of them things, you got to rest for a minute. Because he said he gets out of breath. Oh yeah, Fish I got and another ten minutes. I'm gonna make a move to my final spot because once I get there, I ain't moving. All right, nine two two sounds like a plan. Uh, Fishing fever in the house, saying the most famous rod saved by Danny was Black Betty during a fever believer bash. Yep, and Andrew Whitehouse, uh, size matters catfishing. 
he dove on the rocks and got Black Betty back. Because at the time, Coda was fighting that 39 pound blue that she had on. And yeah. all of a sudden, Andrew started screaming, and Black Betty, we looked up and she was bit in half, and it snapped the handle off of her because we hit her down the rocks. And down the rocks it was going, and Andrew dove in there and grabbed her, and he handed me the rod, and that fish was on. So at that time, at that moment, uh, Coda and I both had on some massive fish because that thing was, I mean, stripping drag like crazy. And I wanted to hurry up and help her because I knew she had her PB. And so I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and horse this fish in real quick and help her. Huge mistake. When I put pressure on him, it popped the hook. But you know what? I'd do it again because she got her PB that day or that night. Uh, her biggest fish before that was a seven pound blue. And that night she got a 39. Oh, absolutely. It was, a, I, I was watching that night too. And that was, uh, that was awesome. And the handle was broken half on black Betty. Yeah. Isn't Let's when she here. got that shirt with a certain saying on it? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> she wore that cotton picking shirt to CatCon. And, and, and I was, I was like, you're not wearing that shirt. And she went to the station, and she goes, Mama, Papa said I can't wear this shirt. She goes, well, well Papa just got to get over it. <laughs> I wasn't going to stop her from wearing that shirt. She loves that shirt. Shade tree catfishing in the house, saying the fish at Kentucky Dam isn't from people throwing them on the bank. The water level fluctuates <coughs> so much that when the yeah. water level goes down, all those carcasses are uh, that were thrown in our beach now. So I guess that does happen if they're floating. Josh, yeah, it does. But, but I've, 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 I've fished there for skipjack, and I've seen people throwing them up on the bank. But it's, yeah. it, it's a combination. And you know, a lot of those yeah. fish, uh, you'll see a lot of those fish floating out there uh, that have half their head knocked off or something, you know. Uh, that's from going through them turbines, too. Them turbines oh, yeah. just beat the crap out of those fish. Well, I don't want to bring it up again, but, you know, I, that did cross my mind with Dominic yesterday, and I just wasn't sure where he was. I knew he was at the Kentucky Dam, and, you know, from what I was watching, it looked like he was pretty close with it. Sounds like he's okay, and he got his boat back, but all his gear was gone. So yeah, um, well, he, I'm pretty sure he was on the downstream side. Oh well, that's good. Hey, Josh Thompson, how JD? By the time you got your tangle undone, the tournament was over yesterday. Well, I did have a pretty good mess, but to be honest with you, Josh, I did get it undone, and I was able to run four more rods right there, all the way to the end. I just had boat traffic running right straight over top of where I was fishing, and all I could do was wave and smile at them. So, you know, that's all you can do. But I had a good time yesterday. The wind was tough, and you know, but I, I'm not going to sit here and complain about nothing. I'm glad to be out there, and I'm, you know, privileged to do it. And it is an honor to be able to fish with these guys. I had a ball fishing with my uh, panel yesterday, the uh, Danny Stone and. I had fishing for flatties and uh, lots of good anglers. Well, look at there. There where we've been, uh, you know, everybody throwing out the good thoughts and prayers for uh, Dominic. There's Tanya there. Uh, so, you know, everybody, we're, we're all waiting with bated breath. We want to make sure Dominic's all right. Uh, the link the link is in chat if he wants to come up. Uh but we just want to make sure he's doing okay. Bill Reddick's out there. How's it going, Bill? Thank you, uh, by the way, Tanya, for coming in today. He's real sore, but okay. Oh, thank God. There is the link if, if he does want to come up. And uh, I'm sure that... Uh, you know, by the by, last night the entire catfish community was sending prayers. I'm sure you had all kinds of uh, messages and calls and everything else. But uh, we're glad to hear that he's that he's okay. That's the main thing. Absolutely, Stan. I'm I'm calling you out right now. Uh oh. Uh -oh. All right. Here's the deal. 
you have to put together a date to bank fish. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's a good one. That's easy. That's easy. All right. So we got to put together that date to bank fish. And then we're going, you're going to do some old school style stuff. Yeah. And yep. I'll tell you what, if you'll, if you'll uh, pull it together within the next month or so, or, you know, when you're not doing one of the uh, live fishing league tournament hosting or the king of the Tennessee hosting, <laughs> whatever it is that you're going to host and, because you're really good at it. And we're glad, always glad to see Stan hosting. But here's the deal. If you'll get it together, you and I will pull it together. You don't have to do it right now. If you'll pull it together, I'll drive to the James River and I will bank fish with you. What the what? Yep. Well, that, that's, uh, let's see, a bank spot that's good enough for that. We just got a friendly right. point. You go to Freddie Point. We have to get permission from him. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll be okay with that. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. I'll, I'll, uh, definitely within the next month. That's easy to do. I could do it any. I could basically do it any day, but Wednesday or Friday. And yeah. even then, I could still. Josh Thompson, go bank, Stan. <laughs> yeah. Dustin's saying, hey, Stan, you should make it the third week of June. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, Dustin's off that week. Or he takes a week off in June for his birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh that's why Dustin's saying that. Marillo saying the cowbell is going to the James River. Heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. We got cowbells, man. Yeah, there's a few spots we can go. That's uh, that's one of them. Well, we I know it's the... tough, you know. I mean, I, I hate it that it's so developed and, you know, to the point or it's either not, it's just too, too much trees or brush or whatever, and you can't get down to the bank. So there's a lot of places like that. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, Stan 3 has a lot more bank opportunities than, say, I would have. Because of how rugged it is to get to it. Yeah, there's some that you can get to. You know, there's there's like bank fishing spots that just because it is, like, doesn't mean that you should go there. <laughs> so kind of yeah. like the Jerry Parker thing. And, you know, we've seen Danny and Jerry and them. That It's like, how are they fishing that? Yeah. You know, so if you're able to, there is some spot. But as far as, like, easily accessible bank spots there's just not a lot around what the, about the, the whole the whole james like pier? the whole james river can't we find a fishing pier somewhere and there one oh, we could find some we can find some spots we can get to some spots it's just uh try, trying to the ones that are good spots to go mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. there's so few of them that a lot of times it's people there so that's the well can uh, we like Put up caution tape and dog poo. Or something <laughs> in the middle of it. We just put up caution tape and put some fake dog poo down. Maybe they won't go. They will really, we'll say. Oh, here we go. Tanya said that uh, he he will be up in a minute. All right. You know, cool. no pressure, no pressure on him. I I understand if he doesn't want to. We don't want that at all. But no. Uh, that would be it put a lot of people's minds at ease i i know that for a fact uh yeah think, keep, no, dustin's no. saying i have something on my calendar that's that has some guy named jg coming to somewhere near the james mm -hmm. <laughs> it sure does uh let's see let's see so marillo's happy about that yeah but there's a <laughs> especially this time of year there's some bank you know, there's there's a lot of uh, people fishing the bank, but uh, we can get on some white perch and everything also. So oh yeah, fun. man! I tell you what, we used to, we we used to catch some good sized white perch. I mean, you know, thirteen, you know, fourteen inches long, and um, we'd fry those suckers up the next day when I had my houseboat. Because I could take my pontoon boat up there and then I just put it right on the front of the houseboat. So I could just go out and then come back and, and it was really, really a lot of fun. Um, 
unfortunately, I won't go into the story about why I sold the houseboat, but it was, <laughs> just put it this way, there was some owners that took over and took all the fun out of it. When they started yeah, telling me I couldn't have my gas grill on my boat, and I had my gas grill on the boat for 20 years, and that I had to uh, quit being me at uh, 1030 at night, I, I said, well, I tell you what, you can have it. We were there for since 1994, so we were there almost, I don't know, 25 years. It was fun while it lasted. But anyway, yeah. catch yep. those, uh, we catch those large perch, man, and flay them out and get a good flay off of them and eat. Oh, it was really good white meat. Just, I mean, it was excellent, you know? Well, I tell you, I told you Stan 3 got a batch of them. Uh, yeah, you had fish, fish tacos. That's right. We had the fish had tacos. The, oh, man. And you they were delicious. Hot on it, did you? you didn't put no hot sauce on it, did you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, habanero. No, I put habanero hot sauce. Oh, my God. Now, habanero is not too bad. How about ghost peppers? Do you ever oh. eat ghost peppers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I am I probably, I haven't had the hot as much lately, but I used to have it so much all the time yeah. that, you know, I didn't even consider it hot unless. You know, when you ate it and the sweat was starting to pour, then it that was that was the proper level. If you didn't have the sweat just pouring off, that it wasn't hot. It was just well, I, I it was hang, man. I can't hang with you, man, because I can eat I can eat hot chicken wings and then my uh and then my eyes start sweating. So I ain't got, <laughs> I, ain't I actually at Buffalo Wild Wings, I come to find out I would have won like some contest or something. And I just ordered them because I wanted hot that day. And I ordered the hottest ones they had, and I ate them. And yeah. the waitress was like, well, you should have done the challenge. I'm like, well, you should have told me about the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that like, movie? If you, could eat them, if you could eat the whole thing of wings. Yeah, what was that movie? Was it Uncle Buck where you had to eat that 50 or 60 ounce steak? And, <laughs> and then you just like all stuffed. And then the, and then the guy came out and... I think it was like he got it for free or something in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the guy came out there and said, you got to eat the gristle too, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say now, something Stan, about have you, been, uh, have you been keeping up with our buddy, Brian? Great you, remember you, you remember the one that cooked the, uh, the, uh, the, the chili and the shrimp for me on the Mississippi River? Yeah, he's yeah. Got the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got uh, Outdoors Unsupervised, and his other channel is called Duck Garbage Disposal, which is D-A Garbage Disposal. Uh-huh. Uh, dude, he's got, he, uh, he, he off the plane. He's over, like, England or something doing food challenges over there right now. Really? Yeah. I saw, I saw got, the video yeah, where he was – I saw a few of his videos since that day. I haven't checked it recently. I'm going to have to go check that. Dude, he put out some here recently. They he ate like a five pound burrito in a, in record time or something like that. <laughs> I wouldn't mind trying one of those challenges like that. Uh, Not me. Thank you very much. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, it's the after effect that's the problem. It's not the actually eating it. <laughs> let's see. Oh. Mike Chavez says, I need to try try chili de arbol. arbol? That sounds delicious. Uh, the morning after burns, yeah. Oh, man, I didn't even think about stuff like that. Dominic what? can't drive any of his vehicles. He lost all of his keys yesterday. All of his keys? He lost. I didn't even think about that kind of thing. Yeah. Lost both his phones, I guess she said. Wow. JG, Great American Outdoors was the movie you was trying to think of. John <laughs> King. Great American Outdoors. Well, I'm thinking, um, I, know, I don't remember if it was that or not because it was Uncle Buck because he, you know, he, he came in, uh, babysit his niece, and he was babysitting. 
<laughs> and then he remember he made big pancakes and all that stuff. And he went and <laughs> party and got out of the party in a bad situation. I don't, I don't, but maybe you're right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's where right. he shot the bear in the butt with the lamp. Yeah. That, I remember that one. Is that, that's when they rented the uh, the uh, hot rod, a drag boat. Small water charters heading out. They're heading out to Donkey Land. Well, good luck. Hope you have a great day today. Yeah, I saw a premiere this morning that John put out. That was good. They um, make make some good rocking videos. Y'all go um, go there and sub to Small Water Charters if you have it yet. If you don't. He Absolutely. Went, videos are exciting to watch, and he, he and his wife are both captains. Down very, there. very fun to watch, and very fun to watch, and uh, just really well done, and uh, a lot of a lot of excitement, a lot of fun. You know, fishing and fun, and they definitely do that. And he's been uh, he's been helping me with some things here lately. So big shout out to them. Can't thank him enough for that. That yeah, last. I've seen, I've seen a short. I've seen some other yep. stuff going on. wasn't sure what was happening there. So, but whatever it is, John, thank you. That was it. That last short he put together that uh, video part for me. That little oh, uh, nice. intro. We're gonna be using that on some other things, but makes uh, a big difference. Yeah, yeah. He fun. just out of the blue because he knows that. Uh, <laughs> he knows that technology is not my friend. <laughs> right. So he yeah, offers. you're all right. You you've got a little handicap going there, but you you understand technology. It's just you've got a little bit of a handicap. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so good stuff. Good stuff coming up there. Hey, there's uh Kelly and Cynthia Bullock. Kelly over there on Facebook. That must have been it there. All right. We, uh, I just muted Danny's thing there real quick because we were getting a lot of background noise. Well, we're going to bring him up now. Hey, hey, Dominic. hey, Dominic. How's it going, everybody? Dong, dong, Good to dong. See you, man. Thanks for wow. coming up. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming up, Dominic. Uh, man, prayers answered for a lot of us yesterday. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, you scared, you scared the hell out of us. Uh, <laughs> you imagine? <Yeah. laughs> Real? Yeah. Do you have any idea what we went through? <laughs> yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got an idea. <laughs> just, just a small one. Just a small just, one. Just a little. You have just a little bit of uh, knowledge about what happened there. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, Dominic, appreciate you coming up here. And, um, you know, nobody's here to rag you. We just love you and really, really glad you're here. Sorry you lost some stuff. We can replace that. See but, that. Uh, yeah, man, if you could try to share with us, you know, kind of the pre, you know, what happened coming up, you know, to that event would be cool because there's a lot of inquiring people out of here just want to know what happened to you. Uh, y'all know I'm like, I'm, I, I love this whole too. So I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, a bass boat, I was watching. He came around. He went on behind me and came on around and fished the, the lock wall. Well, when he did the first time, I was like, okay, that's not good. He swamped me. And if you look in the video, I started packing up. Because if he swamped me like that the first time, I hurried up, scooped the water out of my boat, started reeling in. I'm reeling in, reeling in, reeling in, reeling in. I have my last pole in my hand. Already has started the motor and everything. Love you too, brother. Love you too. Appreciate it. But I'm now I'm heading towards the bank. He comes back through when he swamps me the second time. There's nothing I can do but hold on for the ride. When I started going down, well, let me rephrase that. After I flipped, that I mean, because all I can do is hold on for the ride. And after I went down, flipped over, 
that some son of a three-legged wombat came back through and did it one more time while I was upside down in that water. He got me again. And when he got me that third time, like I said, didn't offer any help or anything else. Yeah, he, he did. He pushed me right into the turbine. And there I was, upside down, where the boat was upside down. And I was at turbine number one on Kentucky Dam. 98% of the people that flip at Kentucky Dam either are never seen again or never make it out, whether they have a life jacket or not. They just don't come back. And I said, no, no, not today. I was like, I see I got one more in me. Man, I made 10 laps around that thing. And I was like, I got to let go of this boat and go. So I let go of the boat and I took off and I got out. And I was like, I looked back at the boat. And I said, I'm not leaving that boat. That's my daddy's boat. Uh, I went back. I held on to the boat. I made my 11 turn around in that turbine. But the thing is, with those turbines is they suck you down. If you don't hold on, oh well, I had to make sure I kept my feet up. So appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, I I held on to it. Hey, in my defense, it wasn't my fault. Look at the video. I was packing up. I was getting out of there. I knew better. Well, I went back in there. I held on to the side of the wall. I pushed myself all the way back, put my feet up, and I took off. And when I did, I got out and... Got all the way back to the bank, saw a couple of guys passing by. Well, they heard me yelling for another boat that was down from me. And by the time that boat got to me, I had already got back to the bank, flipped the boat over, and was getting ready to go up the hill. Went, walked up to the side of the damn wall on the rocks and everything, got up there, took off my jersey, took off my, my sweats, took off my boots, set them up there. And before fire and rescue, well, the rescue pit guys ever got there. Oh, yeah, I expect you to. If you don't, I, I think you was mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but by the time they got uh, to me, I was already back in my boat salvaging what I could, which are these two rods right here. Two out of six. So wow. I got two out of six of my rods back. And, and, and these, believe it or not, oddly enough, these are thanks to Cat Claws and Guard Dog because they were connected to them. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. So your guard dog guarded your pole. <laughs> my, my guard dog my guard dog and the cat claws were all holder. Because the guard dog was on the cat claws. The cat claws was on the pallet that I cut from my boat and all of it held it in there. Wow. Well, we are uh no we are so sorry to hear that happening and uh you know I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason. And, you know, um, you, maybe you went through that, to um, you see so many of us out there all the time, maybe in conditions we shouldn't be in whatever, but there's always other people out there and you never know what these other people are going to do. And, uh, so if it helps somebody out, you know, if, if nothing else is going to put safety first and foremost in all of our minds, um, you know, so who knows what situation you going through yesterday, who knows what situation that could have prevented that uh, with anybody else out there. So, uh, but the main thing is we are glad, we are glad, we are glad you're okay. 
for the most part. I know you're you're a little uh <laughs> I'm a lot sore. But uh man, when it, it was just like uh it was <laughs> well you we we, we don't got to tell you. It was uh just one of those things where like where did Dom go and I'm just glad I was on your phone when it happened. Wow. It's just uh you know the prayers were answered, that's for sure. Like you said, not not a lot of uh Yeah. That, yeah. that situation I, ends up a lot worse. We'll just put it that way and Yeah, a whole yeah. lot worse. When I when I found that and see the rescue guys act like they did something miraculous. But what's crazy is they didn't do nothing. And their story says Oh, uh, we came, we jumped into action and we came up there and there was this guy in distress. Dude, I was salvaging the things I could from my boat. <laughs> Randy said, glad you made it back so you can enjoy another pineapple and ham pizza. Oh, Randy, that's just horrible. Lisa, even said <laughs> Lisa not you too. Come on. Jody, I, if she well, there there's nothing I can do now. I look, I lost Bertha, so my whole bag of medicine, all, all my keys, all my chargers, my little portable chargers. I lost the my buddy Robbie had just given me this 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 pretty awesome inverter that fit down into my ammo box that went with my battery. It's gone. My my trolling mower battery gone. I do got one battery left over there though, because it wasn't with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's goodness. the way to save them. Don't take them. <laughs> well, if if uh, you know, is there anything that that you want to uh, say to anybody out there about yesterday? First of all, I want to thank all of you for all the prayers and, and well wishes. I really do appreciate all of the prayers because I'll tell you, I'll tell you and everybody else, I can never have too much prayer. Never. So whenever y'all think about putting somebody on your prayer list, make sure I'm on it. Jay, what's up, brother? What's up, Rick? Bobcat, Ernie, I saw all y'all. Thank y'all. I appreciate you. All your prayers, all your prayers. I'm, I appreciate all of them. But, but it's not always your boat. It's the other boaters around you. We all knew that when it came to Cody, the same way we found out all the drivers around you when it came to Dustin and everybody else. You got to watch the other people. That's why, if y'all saw in the video, Dominic was packing up to get away. Because that dude there, he had ulterior motives. And I think he accomplished his mission. It's just, I, I and I think Mike Chavez put it out there. I can't believe that there wasn't other, the other boaters weren't like, uh, there was other boaters around. And yeah, nobody came to like try to the, help her. That same guy swamped me three times. The first time he did it. I heard up, got what water I could, and I would start packing up. And then after I had the boat almost clear, I started packing up. I wanted to make sure I was safe before I packed up. Me safe, then I can go. Because yeah. I couldn't go unless I was safe. Unless I knew that boat was good for me to go, I could not go. So I hurried up, scooped out the little bit of water that he had swamped me with, and then I started packing up so I can go. And then when he came back through the second time, he sunk me. The third time, I was already flipped over upside down, and all he did was push me in there to that turbine. Wow. I had my bag with me. And normally, everyone knows Bertha is normally on my side. But Bertha wasn't on my side because I was on Palmetto's channel. And I couldn't keep her properly covered. 
Yeah. Mm. Uh, no, nah, it's a 12 foot um, game fisher, Sears and Roebuck. But that's just it. Everybody talking about all that boats, and I say, man, I've had that boat in Ohio, the Tennessee, and the Mississippi River. But because I had an issue originally, I was like, I'm going to take the boat to the lake. Lake is not is nowhere near as rough as the river. I should be okay. But when they come through with those big, huge motors, and they swamp you on purpose, so you will move out of their spot or whatever, and that's what happens. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yep. yeah, it's just absolutely uh, I can't even, I, I just don't even have words. It's uh, you know, you see, you see that stuff out on the river, and I just can't believe that no one else, you know, even if you, even if the guy did you know originally just try to be a pain in the you know what to get you out of there that when it actually went down like that that he, he didn't, didn't offer assistance you know it's one thing to be a jackass but then to you know when that you went too far and throw a rope or something like that and the other boaters out there had to see what was going on i can't believe that nobody came to do anything that's the the That's family the there, was, really. there was a family only like three, maybe four sales or 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 they were they were at the they were actually at the lock wall and I was in the turbines. So they were just I mean they were in ear reach of me. I mean the guys up above with the cars going by heard me and two of those guys come down. But the guy, but the family that was down there, when they saw me, I and this is the last, this was the 12th pass I made around inside that turbine. The father looked, the child looked, and then the mother looked, and I was like, huh. And by the time they made it over there to me, and all he did. And I watched him. He pulled up his trolling motor and sat down in the seat and started heading down there to me. By that time, it was over. I had already done flipped my boat back over, tied it off to a rock. The guy did come down the hill and said, hey, hand me that rope. Let's pull it up a little further. I was like, all right, appreciate it. And we pulled it up a little farther. But it was over by the time they got there. Yeah, yeah. Code. What the hell? Help. Always help. Yeah, yeah, that's. Went yeah, back that's... And... I did, Jody. You know, it's one of the things like you're. <laughs> you're trying to host the tournament and you're trying to get, uh, uh, you know, good audio and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's one of those situations, it's tough. Oh, it's, it's, I don't think he's on. No. But there we go. But but I kind of I, I got to give me a new 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 safety deterrent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she'll stay on my hip this side. I just had to make sure I had to wear an extra long shirt. <laughs> Wow. Well, Dom, we're uh, we're all uh, like I said, we're all we are all uh, uh, relieved. You know, like I said, you're the most important thing. The other stuff, you know how it goes. That'll be worked out, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you'll be back out there hopefully in no time. Yeah. Well, well I'm gonna go sit my button down to something more comfortable than this shirt. Yeah, brother. I'm. Thank you for coming up. I I appreciate you putting. You put a lot of people's mind at ease coming up and talking with us. I did uh, realize that I'm old now. <laughs> Absolutely, man. 
Brother, it catches everybody. And it, I mean, I, you... I, I, I got out of there, and I actually, when I put my feet up against that wall, I mean, I got these side 15s, but I, I had on my boots. <laughs> and those boots were completely filled. Oh, absolutely. And whenever I would bring my legs down, trying to tread the water, I could feel them trying to suck my boots off my feet. I was like, I can't get these boots off without stepping on the back of them. And then they're full of water, so they got the suction. suction. On right now. <laughs> I was like, now nah, I'm. A, I put my feet up on the boat, and I just nice and politely waited around. Yeah, size 15s. Yeah, I got. You know, I got some ground pounders. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, you, you enjoy the rest of your day, man. Thank you so much for coming up and talking with us and really appreciate you. Love you, man. You, uh, um, you be safe out out there. Right you, good change. Yeah, we'll dirt, and, but, uh, we're glad you're okay, man. All right. Uh, y'all be good. I'll be in chat. Awesome, we'll be talking man. soon, brother. We'll be talking soon. Oh, definitely. I, I'll give, I'll, when I, whenever I get a chance, I'll send y'all a temporary number, but don't I don't even know how to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll I had to borrow, I had to borrow my grandson's phone. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, you know, it's, prayers are still going out to you, brother. We hope that uh everything is okay and get recovered quick. And if anything, you know, if there's anything we can do, all you gotta do is uh shout it out and we'll all be there. Marillo and Big Socks. We also wear Big Socks. <laughs> but, uh, all right, Dom. We'll let you get going. Thank you, brother. Thanks for coming. Right, we'll talk all to right. you soon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Man, well, that is great news there. Uh yeah, it's just a crazy situation, you know. We got, you got to, you know, if you are in a small boat, whatever it is, and you know, you're probably only talking the water level on the side of that boat being, you know, what, maybe six inches to water to come over the edge of it. And, you know, if you got a boat plowing, you know, a bass boat or whatever, a boat that, that's not on plane, what I mean by plowing is they've got throttle down on the engine. And there, it's a fast idle, so the boat's like this, and when it and it's plowing, so what it does is create a really big wake, and then when the wake comes over, and you know you're only sitting there tracking, you know, you've got like six inches, and in, man sends a two foot wake over there, it's just gonna fill the boat up full of water really fast, and then when that happens, you know, it, you know, gravity and physics takes over, and your boat flips, and yeah. Uh, that's not a good thing and i really hate that happen to him and um it's it's a sad deal uh to hear the way that went down but um dominic's still with us and that's and it's a miracle in itself it's like he said you know there's not many people that put the boats or fall in the water there by the turbine that you ever see again and we we get to see dominic again so i'm really really happy about that Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, you know, if you see a boater in distress, help them out. I, I don't really, I know we don't got to say that to most people here, uh, and I'm sure all of us have stories of how we have, at one point or another, helped other people out, helped out wildlife, helped out. You know, uh, that's the most disturbing part to me here. In that, number one, it was caused by another boater, mm -hmm. and then. Number two, that there wasn't like there would have been no quit like that would have been the first. Uh, I mean, I don't even know if we would have we saw somebody like that. I don't even know if we would have took the time to reel the rods in. Like we probably would have just cut line and go like to try to get to that person that just flipped. Over. You know, what? I don't that, that there wasn't a quicker response to that from the people around them. That's the part that uh, kind of is like, wow, that's, that's the shocking part to me. Cause yeah. Hey, Bobby, nine, two, two crappy barbecue. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. 
Is that your PB spot? I think I mentioned you. Uh, you heard. I'm on the other side of the highway from it because the wind is okay. too bad on on the other side. But well, it's I remember the same saying, spot. I'm just in the bay yeah. side of it. And what what was your PB from the other side there? What kind of fish was it? It was a 34 pound six ounce flathead. Nice. Good. Now, I see Bobcat in the uh, chat today, Stan. He and um, uh, Fish Sizzle was out there fishing together. And uh, I think they were down in Louisiana, traveled down there. Man, congratulations to those cats, man. They had a really, did you see that flathead they caught yesterday, Stan? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, not a, it's not a big, not a big shocker. They, uh, amazing fishermen. Uh, oh, yeah. Know, they are. Love, love watching them. Uh, you know, for Shizzle, I mean, the, the amount of knowledge that he's picking up in a short time is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, so always great to see Bob out there fishing. And uh, so, you know, that the people that are out there fishing hard, putting the time in, they, you know, they, they deserve what they get. And that's uh, absolutely so happy for them. They did a great job. Yeah, well, he said 362 miles ago, they were watching listening to us while they're traveling. Bobcat says, thank you, KG. Absolutely, Bob. You know, when I was fishing on Brian B's channel yesterday and um, doing the best I could out there. But, you know, I saw some comments in here. You know, I think Bob even put something there, too, that um, he was talking about it was okay to put up some phone noise or this, that, and the other. But, you know, about, you know, if we're talking about the safety end of it, I think the biggest thing that we could possibly do as host is just of space to have two hosts and you have one host constantly watching the screen uh of what's going on and you know being kind of in the production background but that's something to think about you know moving moving for the future because it is a really pain in the butt to listen to a lot of wind and all a bunch of noise because people just turn it off and we want we want people to watch and it'd be a pleasant experience but there's going to be a balance between the safety of it. And I think Dominic's uh, incident yesterday is going to uh, make some improvements for us and we'll figure that out. But it was, uh, you know, not a good situation at all because it's a real Debbie down on the whole tournament. Um, and it's amazing how many lives that affected yesterday with what happened to him. Absolutely. But, but you know, again, you know, we're, uh, here on stand day, we want to make everybody smile and be happy. And uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful day here in the Carolina stand and it's not much wind. I, I thought seriously, I probably should have went out fishing, uh, this morning and go fish the local pond. And, you know, I've got a little 1500 acre lake over here. I put the boat in and go fishing and I'm going to try to do some more stand days coming up here soon. I've got some, uh, some stuff here. I'm trying to catch up on. Yeah, I was debating it myself. It's a beautiful day here. I don't see a lot of wind out there. Sun is shining. It's going to be 80 degrees here in Virginia today. That's yeah. borderline hot. <laughs> yeah, it is hot, isn't it? So um, really, really appreciate 922 and Danny Stone being out here for you on stand day. That's awesome. Those guys. Absolutely. They, have you I got was... a fish on, Bobby? You got a fish on? No. Okay. I'm snossaging it again. Uh oh. That's his, <laughs> that's fat fingers, if y'all don't know what that is. <laughs> and I want to go back to uh, Tony Harrison's um, book, where I, I am on him about writing this book. And what happened was, it will be the name of the book. And we're talking about fishing excuses of why we didn't, why you didn't catch fish. But I tell you what sparked that was. Um, uh, Tony Harrison and Stan three, which is two Stan's son, were doing a fish off. And that was, uh, <laughs> and I, I don't remember if it was from the, I don't remember which term it was. Stan can probably uh, pop it off the top of his head. Midnight madness, Brian B's midnight madness. Okay. So they were two winners. There was a couple of, uh, weekends or whatever of fishing. And then they were having a fish off. And then, but anyway, Stan three, I uh, absolutely killed it that night. I think he put like 350 pounds of fish in the boat in like five hours or something. It was crazy. 
But, but Tony Harrison was over there going. And what happened was the wind was blowing too hard, and he was coming up with all these excuses, man. <laughs> But we had no, they weren't excuses, they were reasons why. <laughs> right, right, right. And you know, so that, for those that don't know what we're talking about or where we're moving ahead here with the uh with the, with Tony Harrison's book, um I was reading Jody's chat there. Yeah, absolutely, Jody. And I know she's I saw something out there before her other comment about um uh, there's still some people out there that aren't happy to see females out there and you know especially you see jody doing all that stuff by herself i'll be right back and, yep so uh you know and as a as a grandfather that has uh granddaughters that love going out there fishing i hate to even hear stuff like that uh you know marillo's got um uh, my niece lauren that goes out there and we've got so many awesome female anglers in the uh you know, in the community. And I, I've told Jody many times before, I don't consider her a female angler. Like it's a negative thing. She's another angler. She catches uh, any given day. She could be anybody out there. And That's what I was going to say. They're just jealous because she's catching bigger fish than them. <laughs> I concur. I concur. So, uh, um, Fish and Fever is asking, where's the replay of the dams incident? Uh, it's on Palmetto Cat's channel, and it was about the four-hour, thirty-four-minute mark. Yeah, he was going back through because once once uh, we saw that Dom wasn't there, he was Palmetto was trying to watch, you know. And, and when you're host, like you were saying, when you're hosting a tournament by yourself, um, like when we have it on, we got it on the solo screen. I'll just put Bob or I'll put Danny up here on solo screen. So when it's like that, you think, okay, well. Nobody else can see, but if we, as the host, we hit a button, we can see everybody else's screen. Uh, yeah, like I can see what everybody else is doing. So yeah, when you put it on full screen and you know the the person is there picking their nose, you, we see that. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Why well, you always it, gotta keep bringing that up? I did it one time. One time. <laughs> But for the safety I reasons, know, like, I didn't know you could see that. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we hit the guest button and we get all the screens behind, so we can still see. So that's what a lot of times we're looking at that. But then you're to do that, then you're missing chat, and to try to. It happened after Danny showed his fish. Is what Tanya's saying. Uh, to do that, you, you miss kind of the chat, and, it, and then you're trying to put scores in and, and do everything else. So it does get a little bit. Uh... Yeah, if they if they fast forward, <laughs> you'll see. Uh, I think they put me on solo screen. I, I went and snagged a carp. That's what it was. Yes. I took it down, I took it down there to a Matt Richard. And it was that. Yeah, and you see, and it's just tough. That's why I hate, I hate fishing in the wind, live fishing especially. It's bad enough just fishing in the wind, but when you're live fishing and you're trying to do, you know, you know that uh, if you're even if you're the angler out there on another thing, you're you're always constantly thinking about that, uh, and you've got the little muff thing on there and. It's just, uh, it's a lot of stress. Well, you know, here's a suggestion, Stan. You know, so I have a, um, a relatively cheap in-ear piece that goes in my ear and it has a microphone on it. Well, on that, you know, you're talking about trying to get back to the mute button or, you know, unmute when you've lost several fish or whatever. But if you wear that earpiece, it has a mute button on it. And you can just reach up there and tap it. Just reach up there and tap it and it'll mute your mic and you can still hear, um, still hear your, your host or whatever. So that's a thought. Um, you know, it's about like, here's, you know, here's an embarrassing situation for me that happened yesterday and I'm calling myself out on it. You know, I tried to weigh a fish yesterday with the mad cat scale I'll be and, right I was, and I was pushing, you know, there's a lock mode on that scale and I, and I hit the button. 
and it came up, you know, as it was, uh, H was on, which meant the scale was locked and it wouldn't lock. And I picked that fish up four or five times. And then my wife went back and watched that yesterday and she was aggravated with me as long as I kept that fish out of the water. So I promised, you know, that I'll get out here and work this scale and see if I can't make this thing work a little better. That was my fault. I had not picked that. I, you know, I've had the scale since December. Uh, actually, my wife bought that for me for Christmas, and um, I just hadn't picked anything up with it. You know, how hard is the fish scale to use? You know, is what I'm thinking. Well, you know, I get it out yesterday, and I'm trying to get the thing to do it, do what it's supposed to do. And, you know, I ended up, you know, with a fish out of the water for five or six minutes, and, you know, before I got him back, but I got him back, and he, he was fine. He swam off. Catfish are pretty hardy. But, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, practicing with, practicing with your equipment, you know, whether that be your in-air piece, muting on and off, your scale, you know, getting set up with your camera on your boats or your bank, you know, having tripods, having camera angles set up. And it comes with experience. It just comes from, okay, going back and watching your live stream or watching where you fished and you say, hey, I could have had a better angle here. What could I do different? What would be easy way for me to uh, put the camera on the boat so I can spin it one way or the other without changing cameras, cameras front to back. But, you know, it's what it, it's what it's all about. It's all learning curve. Um, you know, you guys have been out here doing live streams for quite some time. I just came into the situation last year was able to fish a few tournaments of uh, live fishing tournament league, fished a few stand days, and it is a learning curve. And But, again, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that I'm calling myself out on weighing the fish yesterday, and uh, I feel bad about that, but it won't happen again. Speaking of your piece, mine just went in the water. Oh, no. See if I can get one of the other ones. I'm going to see if I can find this earpiece that I use, and that thing works really good. That is. There's Thomas. Yeah, it's not even. It's, it's, uh, you're up above the water there, too, huh? Oh, is that? I said, yeah, now you can't even hear. I said, you're way up above the water. Uh, actually, the water is only about a foot or two from me. <laughs> uh, JG Marillo said that he's found the best way to not have issues with the scale. Is just don't catch fish. Problem solved. Hey, <laughs> I don't know what Marillo's talking about. I've seen him catch plenty of fish. He'll be back. Curtis is out there. Thomas Laughing Cat. And by Curtis, we're talking about the gun die outdoors. <laughs> Sometimes don't overlook the obvious. <laughs> Yeah, we got to get that backed up. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy G's out there. I'm looking for this earpiece, Dan. Hang on. You're good. 78 awesome people. Marilla said he almost made it out there today, but his back said no. John, Jody says, can't keep any beer buds in. They all fall out when she bends over. The one I have wraps around here. Yeah, I have that if Jody's with... earbuds, if Jody's earbuds fall out, can't she just brush her hair later and find them? <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, uh, that's why you carry them all. What we need to solve the problem is no more wind. No more windy days when somebody's out fishing. There we go. Solved. Or since you need a little bit of wind. So, you know, two to three mile per hour winds. That's a, that's acceptable. All right, Stan, I found this thing. I'm going to bring this over here.
but this particular one here is the one I use, but this thing lasted complete the complete six hours did not, you know, I had a couple of times where it disconnected on its own. I just ha I had to come out and go back in, but, but I mean, it, it works really well. And I mean, you can go out there. I have, you know, plain tronics, uh, ones that I bought that, that are $110 and, you know, this, and this one here, you know, even, you know, 40 bucks and you might be able to catch one you used or somewhere on sale. Uh, on Amazon, but this thing works really, really well. And this, and this piece here that has the little three buttons on the back of it, that just wraps around your ear. So, and then that other piece, and you see the little push button right there on the end of it where you're, so that's how you, you can answer, turn it on and off. And you can also mute with that. Uh, but one of the things I really liked about this particular earpiece is it doesn't have that microphone, doesn't have that microphone sticking out you know, down the side. Right. And, and one of the cool things was about this was, is that yesterday I was fishing in, you know, 18 knot winds and I had a hoodie on. I just flipped the hood up over my, my head and oh, you could you go, yeah. all the wind noise. That's but a great idea. Really well. I just thought I would share that, you know, if you, if you're interested in something like this, but you can hear the host really well. And that makes a huge difference. If you're trying to, you know, and you can hear what other people are saying. And even if their mics are not great, uh, like on a television or something, but you can hear them pretty good, uh, of what they're saying. So it, it's, uh, I, I definitely give it a two thumbs up. So that's just okay. my opinion on that deal. And there you, there you go. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, you're out there fishing and, and it's harder to it for the hosts and everybody to hear you on those windy days you can't hear what anybody else is saying. Uh, so if the host is trying to talk to you, you know, you're out there and it's impossible to hear. And then it's yeah. just, it just it gets frustrating. It, it just really gets frustrating. Dustin is asking if you could send him the link to that. I'm going to put it in chat and I'll um, send it to you as well. Dustin. There's Lloydies just fishing UK out there. How's it going? Lloydies 45 mile per hour winds. On um, the one day, and I was able to fish. Yeah, and, and um, like I, I am supposed to wear uh, hearing aids, and they're very similar to that, but it, it doesn't. They don't work very well with Streamyard. Um, mine don't so. <laughs> what the what? Doing well, doing well. Yeah, so we have the uh the white perch are running up here, so definitely want to get out and get some of those. I want to get some of those caught. Uh they uh retired rick saying thanks jg been looking for something like that he'll check them out for sure yeah i'm getting ready to put it. i'm getting ready to put it in chat and it you know it's one of those things that uh it's you're it's good to find something that works if you do some live streaming like i know rick's been been uh going out there and putting some time in Pretty sure that they make a hearing aid now that comes with blue. Yeah, it has the Bluetooth, but for some reason, it uh, when we've been trying to use it, it uh, it doesn't. What's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't pair right with Streamyard for some yeah, reason. Yeah, Danny, awesome. Danny has issues too, as well. Um, uh, with he has hearing aids as well, and you know he 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 wants to hear the host, and so uh, but his mic he he his microphone levels drop way low when he's using that for whatever reason. Oh Lord, we got trouble in the basement. <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, I have those. Oh here right now. Lord. <laughs> Look, oh, man. I think somebody got fish yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Dan, it's that fish sizzle guy. That fish sizzle guy look, and Bobcat. Look, it's that fish sizzle guy. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? How's the trip? What's up with y'all? Just, uh, we're just sitting here watching oh, some fishing. <laughs> no, he's mostly talking about yesterday. We might what you got, Bob? Yeah. What did you bring your Tonka toy with you or what? Oh, oh we, lost, we lost him. Phone conducting headphones, they work really well. Yes, we are so, and you know, I was trying to give words of encouragement to Tanya yesterday, but that, you know, what are you going to do? She's there at the house and just sitting there praying and hoping everything's okay. But we hope that you're doing better today, Tanya. Oh, could you imagine? I mean, I don't want to bring up a lot of bad stuff, but yeah, you know, I mean, that's your, your husband out there. Yeah. Yeah. Skip Jack Cindy in the house and I have a bone conducting headphones. They work really well. Not sure what that is. Never heard of them. Uh, Jody's saying, is that just for one ear? I like wearing only one so I can hear what's going on in my surroundings. The one that I, that I brought up. Yes, Jody, that's just one ear. If that's what you're talking about. But it doesn't fall out, you know, because it wraps around your ear. Or at least mine didn't yesterday. But, what I, you know, I've tried those other those other earpieces. I have two more. <laughs> I have one like Austin wears. Now, Austin, uh, I bought one like uh, Fish and Fever War uh, because he has such good uh, audio quality on his stream. So I bought one of those and then, but it won't last long uh, for the, at least the one I had. I mean, you know, switching switching earpieces in the middle of a six hour live stream is I mean, I, I get it, but I want something that's gonna last the whole time and and I'm not sitting there worried about it. Cause I don't want to think about it. I'm fishing. And uh, and you know, and making it easier to uh turn the uh camera and all that stuff, having a tripod with a little handle on it so you can just spin it around right fast and not be having to deal with a bunch of stuff is where I'm going, but uh, I can actually, I can actually relate to this. <laughs> I have said that before because on the nightstand, and if I, I'm like, I gotta find, where are my glasses at? I can't find my hearing aid. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! When, you, when you've been around too many rocket jets and That's music, right. you know, you're playing a lot of music, loud music, rock and roll, right. In the day. That's right? And you get, you get a little older. It all catches up. Yeah. It's like yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. This is the air bag. These, these are uh, uh, Monster Airstreams. Uh, oh. Advanced Auto sells them. They're like 44 bucks. That's why I can afford to lose one here and there. <laughs> oh, man. God, That's I horrible. It. I hate you losing any equipment. Yeah, I feel bad when stuff like that happens on stand day because it's like, oh, you feel responsible for it. <laughs> yeah. Sign here, bear down hard. Stan's not responsible. <laughs> yeah. I'll send in my reimbursement request. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Checks That's in right. the mail. As soon as I get paid from Chad, I'll transfer that over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. My wife says that I need hearing aids, but if I get them, then I can't say that I didn't hear her. Oh, yeah. I, I know. I, I, I still try to use that one, and I forget that I have them on, but I couldn't hear. Oh, yeah? You got the hear? Oh, yeah, oh, it's not working. They're dead. I, I uh... Yeah. What did you say, honey? Huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's... Um, my wife gets so frustrated with me. She'll She'll be talking to me. And, you know, if I'm not looking at her, watching her mouth move or something like that, usually I can't understand everything. And it's, you know, hearing loss, but it's um, me saying, huh, you know, that drives her crazy. Huh? What'd you say? 
It says I have to repeat stuff two and three times. <laughs> just gets doesn't so bother aggravated. you, right? <laughs> you get so aggravated with me. Yeah, that doesn't bother my wife at all. Huh? What? Huh? Huh? What? I'm what you sure my wife is watching this right now and screaming hallelujah. <laughs> oh, <is she? laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> we, know, we know you can't hear, Danny. We don't know what the excuse is, but maybe you're trying try, try being a uh, field artillery. Yeah, that'll do it, too. <laughs> that, that's basically the only argument me and her have on a regular basis. Is She'll be talking to me and standing there by me, and she'll walk down the hallway, or she'll turn her back to me. And I'll start yelling, I can't hear you. You know I can't hear you. And she'll turn around and start yelling louder. Hey, you know, you know something that, um, and another thing, you know, you're talking about arguments with your spouse. This is what happens when you get, you know, you know, it's been married as long as we have, but I'm sure newlyweds, the same situation is what are we having for dinner? Oh, um, <laughs> that is. You'll be like, what do, have, what do you want for dinner tonight? And, you know, I don't know. You just get whatever you want. And it's like, oh, why are you being difficult? You know, it's, oh, God, what a crazy conversation. I think you just need to come up with a wheel stand, like a wheel, and we just spin the wheel. Okay, Taco Tuesday, we're going to have chicken on Sunday, pizza on whatever. You know, it's got to get easier, but it is a, it is a, it is something that you deal with when you're married. What are we? <laughs> I'm laughing because I can't I can't relate to any of those things. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> and then oh, and then, oh, oh, and you're not off the hook yet. It's like and then you you know the spouse says, oh, "Okay, well, just whatever you want, and you go get it and bring it back." And then you bring it back, and he's like, "What did you bring me that for?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want that. <laughs> Yeah, you go to, uh, go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, and then she'll say, "You're like, well, I wanted Popeye's chicken. Well, yeah. why didn't you say that? And I would have went there." Well, Start I am it. pretty. For me, I'm pretty safe. I'm pretty safe. You get me cheeseburgers <laughs> or anything fried, and we're good to go. <laughs> that is terrible. Honey. Or pizza, pizza. You could get pizza anytime. Oh Lord, have mercy. But if you get me cheeseburgers, you better get me a few of them. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, that's one argument we don't have around our house is what's for dinner. Because um, usually when I'm out fishing, uh, she's the, she'll uh, like mow and weed eat the yard and do all that while I'm fishing. So when I get home, uh, she can tell me we're having boiled tree bark and I'm eating it because I don't want to mow the yard. <laughs> 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 Got 77 awesome people up there. Laughing Cat says, they, Oh, yeah, the TV too loud. That's another one. Oh, my goodness. There's there's that Daryl guy. That's uh, Trophy Seekers Outdoor. What's up, Daryl? Says, Better late than never. I guess we lost Bobcat. Yeah, they apparently, of course, as soon as they tried to come up, I don't. He had something in his hand. I don't know what it was. We don't. A, a bobcat, by nature, is a timid animal. You can spot them every now and then, but they usually scurry off into the brush immediately <laughs> after. Uh, <laughs> well, speaking of that, <laughs> yeah, back. They got my signal down here in the bayou. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, you have to get one of them star links. Yeah, you boys is going big time on us, so you have to get the Starlink now. <laughs> well, congratulations, fellas. Awesome job yesterday. Hey, thank you, Stan. Thank you, thank you, buddy. Always love watching. Uh... Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think it matters at this point. <laughs> My wife was saying, I forgot the 22-minute warning, and, well, we haven't seen a fish all day, so I don't think it matters. <laughs> but, uh, Oh, so, man, are we at the 22 minute warning? We are 20 minutes left, yes. Oh, man, I got to get that 22 points, man. I got to go set up. <laughs> it could oh. win it today. It'll win it today. Oh, Come I'm on, going man. to. So, I noticed y'all weren't bumping that much yesterday. Good, man. The current, the current in the room, man. Like, it was ripping, man. Like, we were. 
we were in eddy fishing in in the eddies all day long because the current was just so strong well and that's uh you know you'll hear epic talk a lot about that type of current and uh finding those situations like that and it obviously worked for y'all yesterday uh what'd you have three fish was a hundred what was your three big fish it was 98.22 pounds there you go <laughs> what is it with those twos i don't know and the uh you got the you started with the nice flathead right was that the first big fish no, I, I, the big blue was the first Sixty pound, fifty eight something pound blue, our first fish. That's right. We we went two hours without even a bite, and we were like, I think I, I think I've we seen lost that. Good fish in the first. Yeah. Let's see. I think I've seen that down there before for shizzle, where there was no bite for a while. Yeah, they're back now. Danny's going to go with the uh, point two, two, two here. He's getting ready to snag a car. He's now, getting ready to snag a car. Normally, normally I could do this on the first throw, but because we've hyped it up so much, <laughs> you know that we may have to throw a few times. But we're going for the point two, two for the win. It's like, you know, it, it, you're you're at the end of the football game, score side. Do you kick for the goal and get the point to win? Well, we're gonna go for it. We call that the blue twenty-two play. You got it. <laughs> I just gotta make sure I don't hook you guys with that right there while I'm swinging. Yeah, nothing like phone going off in the water. It's happened. Now watch this. We've jinxed it, JD. Surely not. Yeah, because I always get one on the first roll, but since we talked about it so much, we're going to have to throw a few times. But you throw we'll it in the wrong spot. Yeah, it could be. And another trick to it is when that hook gets close, stop jerking because I have sent that thing back toward me. <laughs> oh, I've nothing, speed before. You're nothing like hitting your buddy in the head with that big old sinker. I don't mind hitting my buddy. I don't want to hit me. <laughs> see, I knew. You see, that's the way Danny rolls. That's right. I hey, hit if my I buddy. You, if I hit you, you're fishing too close. He caught, one, <laughs> he caught a um, carp yesterday um, like this and uh, caused uh, one to be outdoors. Uh, Matt was leading some bait. I think he came over here and was stealing Danny's worms. Well, he wanted, he wanted a car. He had a He wanted a car. I said, give me a few seconds. And yesterday, the first, first pull had one. But today, because we piped it up so much, we're going to have to work for it a little bit. But we will have a car on here in a little bit. We'll just take the breath right out of you. Oh, that was a really bad throw. That's there he is. Look at him. Got him. Got him. Wow. Ain't that something, guys? That's crazy. First pull on that throw. Man, he's heading downstream to my catfish rods. Yeah. Oh, this one's tail hooked. He's going to be fun to get in. Uh huh. Yeah, me too. Come here, big boy. Bob, you're going to have to catch a brim or something. We're dragging him in backwards. 
Oh, come here. Wow. Got him inside. All right, so we can drag him up on the bank. Need a longer rock. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's what, like a. Hell, I mean that's that's what that gum, ten ten twelve pound. <laughs> oh, we're gonna put some sales on it now that you've said that. I, I it looks to me like it's, it's pretty big. You can, hey, hey, wow! You got your mad cat scales with you, Danny? Yeah, buddy. I do. I do. Yeah, weigh that, Matt. Give us a, a mad cat scale dem demonstration and why you weigh that fish too. If I can get this hook out of him. Now that treble, that's a serious treble hook there. Oh, come on, dude. There it came out. Yeah, that's my rig I throw for snagging right there. Great. Yeah, that's what. I just Probably wire a weight to the bottom of that hook. One of the, like, 10 all treble hook? Probably. Looks like it. Danny's God, got his. Danny's got his damn River Boys shirt on today. Check it out. Point two two, baby. All right, let me get a scale. We'll throw a weight on that fish real quick. Danny's gonna I'll be right a back. Mad Cat scale demonstration. Since JG was not good at it yesterday, I don't know where Stan went. That's crazy. Hey, Bob, what do you think about that demonstration of point two two to win stand days? We still got about 12 minutes to like go. I mean, that boy's working hard. Yeah. What? That's not like some feed dude. Oh, that fish sizzle guy. He'll fish sizzle you in like five minutes to go. You know, watch that boy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we kept seeing. I'm pretty sure yesterday a lot of what we were marking on the sonar were Asian carp in the 80s. Yeah. Like, and we would think, well, maybe they're catfish to stop and fish for them. We're not used to seeing that in Chattanooga or on the Tennessee River. Every, fish. every spot looked like it was loaded with fish. It's just big, big red marks down there. And red yeah. And no, and no one there. Yeah. That just, that's oh, just comes with time on your water and, you know, that depth finder and, and trying to understand what you're looking at. That's a... I don't know that we will ever master that. I mean, you get really good at it, but, you know, knowing what kind of fish you're looking at on the on your depth finders. Uh-oh, we lost them again, Stan. I tell you what. That's the live, live stream. So did you see Danny's fish or did you miss I, that? No, I, I saw I was able to see it. I just uh, was getting something else on my computer here. Okay. Well, Danny's going to demonstrate this scale for us and give me some more lessons on my Mad Cat scale since I did such a lousy job yesterday of weighing a fish. <laughs> right. well, hopefully, hopefully we can get this to work right. All right. Of All course, right. you're going to power on. All right. Let me get and the then, hook. Let me, right. Hang on. Let me get the hook off the back. I should have done that first. There. All right. You're going to power on. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Yeah, we can see it, Danny. Okay. Well, my hold is on there. I don't know if you can see it says hold on. But if you hold down that tear button, okay, we're going to turn the hold off. There it says H off. It flashed H off. I don't know if you saw that or not. So the no, hold is off right. right now. So what you want to do is just hold down that tear button. The second that it flashes H on right there, you let off of it immediately. Now right. your hold is off. Okay? So now whenever I weigh this fish, that scale should lock. All right, let's so see. Let's get, some, let's get some grippers on him. So now, so when you when you hit the H on, it was showing point one two. That was probably the, it's that's back to the last thing that I weighed. So you want to go ahead and turn your scale back off. Okay. And turn it back on, and it's going to show point zero two point two. That's what I weighed last, and it'll go to zero. Wait for it to go to zero. Now okay. you're ready to weigh. Okay. So we've got we've got the tear weight button pushed, and we went H on and let off quickly. And now we're going to weigh the fish. All right. And how much do you think this carp weighs? 
Uh, well, just looking at it, I'm going to say anywhere from, I don't know, 15.5. 12.2. 9.9. 9.9. 12.58. 12.58. I'm going to have to mute you, Bobby. Hey, Got locked in at 12.58. All right, Danny, let me ask you something. So when you weighed the fish and you took the scale off and then you showed us the, the scale on your camera, how long will that stay there? If Because I was taking mine off yesterday and it went and it was going back to zero. Cause still I, there, buddy. Look. Yeah, but I, uh, I'm going to have to practice with mine because that worked good for everybody yesterday because my camera was yep. where it was mounted on my boat is – and I couldn't push the, I couldn't hold the fish on the scale and then get the scale close enough to where my host could see it yesterday because the fish was hitting the console. And uh, if you if you've got it set properly, what the, what? it doesn't come off there until you take it off there. It's still holding twelve point five eight. And then when you're done weighing that fish, you hit on off, reset your weight back to zero. When you first turn it back on, it's going to show blasting you weighed, 12.58. Then right. it's going to go to zero. Okay. And the last thing you weighed will show up on there first. So, Wait, but, that's, zero out. Yep. but after you weighed the fish, yep. you didn't push any other buttons. You just took took the hook out of, off the grip and showed it to the camera. Didn't touch anything. Okay. Didn't touch anything. I'm going to have to, I don't know what was going on, man. All right, Bobcat. All right, Stan. Yeah. Let me get the bloody side away from the camera. There's your screenshot for the winning point two two. We I don't know. Danny. Hold on. Technically, Danny. That's 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 uh, twelve twelve points. Technically, it's a carp. Dude, it was snag though. I'm not counting that snag fish. Okay, it's all right. Be we'll mouth, go right. We got. We we'll uh, go I with mean, the point two two. Yeah, I mean, I want to win, but I want to be, you know, fair about it. <laughs> and in all actuality, guys, we're gonna move back down here real quick because uh, one of our lines is super slack. I went and got the uh, scales, uh -huh. so there might be a catfish on there. Well, oh Lord, Phantom. Guns here. Why don't you check out this? Bobby, I'm going to have to mute you, brother. Yeah, I just did it. Killing me. It's the cars going over the bridge. Where yeah. at. Otherwise, it's yeah, not, it's not it too is. bad. Uh, so here's what I've been working on. Look at that. It's fancy. Got two stands in the middle of it. So this is the, uh, you know, how we kind of did the Uno thing last week and, uh, Part of the Uno thing was the wheel. So I'm thinking, well, and when we did the Sand Day Uno, so I, I was Look. working on a Sand Day wheel. And we need to make the letters just a little bigger on the wheel. I mean, I can read it, but it's hard to read. Yeah, and I'll, I'll probably have to. Uh, Let's I'll see. Probably have Let's to see if I can read it. We've got, it says, inmate, imitate, stand two. Free 2.22 points. Imitate JG. That's funny. Uh oh, here's one coming around in the red. I cannot read it at all. And then I impersonate anyone. Oh, the the Dude, red is give two give 2.22 to the last fish that was caught. Okay, that's the one I can't read. It's blurry. Yep. Can you see this blurry? Maybe you, I know maybe what it is. Some I know what it is, and I can see it on my laptop. So that's a little different. I don't know. I'm, but, I'm looking at it on a 50 inch screen, and I can't see it. But you know, it's just something I was working on last night. Did that think that's cool as heck, man? What do y'all think out in chat? I think it's cool. So spin it, spin it. Let's we're gonna make Doc, hey, we're gonna make nine two two do something. <laughs> now we'll get Danny to do it. Uh, <laughs> okay, eight hey, nine two two. Can you hear us? Nine two two. Nine two two. Can you hear? Us? Yeah. So yeah, I can hear. Here, right. So he. I can't see what it's. 
and for a, for all right, he spun the wheel. So for to get you a point two two to tie with Danny, you got to imitate. You got to do something to imitate JP. Uh, give me just a minute. Uh, well, you, don't, you don't have to. No, I just got slack. Uh oh. Come on, channel cat. I know it's what it is. But, but yeah, I thought that would be. Okay. So when uh, so, I just snag three more cars. <laughs> 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 Perfect. <laughs> oh, that's definitely he got the that point two two on that. That lady nailed it. That was really quick. How the tackle box? All right, so we have a tie. We got point two two for Bobby and a point two two for. for <laughs> now we're gonna have to come up with a tiebreaker, Stan. You're a smart boy. Think about it. Let's see. Let's see. There's Benoit fishing out there. How's it going? Donald Long. Oh, thank you, thank you. Two minute warning. Two minute warning. I can snag a carp in two minutes, but I don't have the energy to run back down there. I want to get away from these rocks. <laughs> I would have to run away from these rocks. And I'm not throwing that snagging rod around these rods. I don't blame you. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. think about it. We got two minutes to think of it. But while we got you there, Danny, anything you'd like to add? We got two minutes left. Anything you'd like to add before we do get out of here? No, man. Uh, uh, I mean, we weren't on the fish today, but uh, other than that, uh, another great stand day, man. It's always fun hanging out on Sunday, you know, fish or no fish. And what did That's I do right. with that night? <laughs> hey, and, and, uh, for those, and for those that are in chat, Danny Stone uh, will be going live today on his show at uh, 1 o'clock. Eastern time. No, it's at eleven thirty actually, uh my time. Uh it'll be thirty minutes after this is over. I need just a little bit of a break, kinda get everything together, rest for a minute, and then uh we'll be live in thirty minutes. But you can go over there and check out Danny Stone. He's awesome, man. You can hang out with him this afternoon and fish and he uh he'll absolutely uh entertain you like no tomorrow. Well we actually had a little takedown earlier, uh whenever you guys were uh talking to Dominic. It wasn't real impressive, but it was enough to make me jump and run. But uh, I didn't want to uh, interrupt that because it was very important that everybody got all that information from him. So I'm like, eh, if he gets on there, I'll let him know. But <laughs> if not, I'll just, uh, you know. So we kind of laid low on that one. And it didn't turn out to be anything anyway. So, But yeah, no, we, uh, we saw you. Day on stand day, we love it, guys. Yeah, we saw you. Um... The rod going down. We put you full screen while that yep, was going yep. on. Okay, I didn't know. I, but I, I had my hearing aids in, and I could hear Dominic talking. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Uh, they brought him up for that moment that is a very important moment because everybody's wanted to know. And uh, even if I had a fish on, I, I, I probably wouldn't have interrupted that. Rock Unless paper. it was uh, like a 50 or 60 pounder. I'm like, go away, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> It's 12 o'clock. Oh, I see Bobby going for the poll. Is Put it your gonna pencils break down. Your... The testing time is over. Put your pencils down. <laughs> <laughs> is it on? Oh, no. Yeah. I, that That is the universal son of a good mark. <laughs> yeah. Sure. He's like, you son of a biscuit maker. <laughs> <laughs> that is the universal sign for nope. It's not there. <laughs> wow. The, the Gondi says we should do rock, paper, scissors for the tiebreaker. <laughs> I am perfectly happy with the tie. He's a good guy. And uh, I'll take that all day long. Me too. It was just good to get out and fish with 
Sam that's right. Like I say we, I say since they both showed up here, the only two anglers we had on stand day. That's right. They're both winners. Absolutely. Congratulations, Danny, Bobby. You're winners of the stand day. You get the bragging rights for the week. <laughs> That's right. I'm That's in good right. company right there. Good company right there. And uh, 922, anything you'd like to add before we get out of here? I don't know if he can hear us. Oh, he hears us. Yeah, it's just another another great day. It's a beautiful day on the lake other than this wind, but everybody knows that I'd be used to that by now. <laughs> Appreciate you, Donald. But, so... Yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to stick around for a little bit. See if awesome. I can catch a couple of channels. And... All right. Well, good luck. Are you still trying to get some fish for Mama's Fish Fry? Yeah, I'm trying to, try to catch a couple more because I guess uh, other people got invited. So <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Well, good luck, okay. Bobby. As always, thank you. Thank you, uh, both you and uh, Danny. Thank you both so much for being such a big part of Stand Day. <laughs> Uh, thank chat for being such a big part of stand day. JG, anything you'd like to add? Hey, appreciate you guys. You stay safe out there and have a great week. You guys have a great week coming up. Looking forward to, uh, watching some fishing channels this week. You know, you guys know the shows and what's out there. I hate to bring them up cause I always leave one out, but we had a really good time over the weekend. You got guys go back and, um, check out some of those, uh, some of our fishing from Saturday and uh, be sure and go over and watch Danny Stone this afternoon, but I appreciate all of you. That's right. And there's a few shows tonight. Daryl's got a show and Lance has got his, uh, river cats tackle show. Yeah. I think, uh, we'll have the, uh, virtual, uh, real and virtual outdoors. Is their drawing for their virtual tournaments on Sunday nights as well? You know, what fish they'll be fishing for this week. So if you like the, the gaming, um, uh, fishing adventures and Troy, uh, real and virtual outdoors. He's, he does a really good job sharing all that with you. It's some good entertainment. You know what? And we have the FOA video. How about we go out with that this time? All right. Sounds good. I appreciate, appreciate you guys. So with that being said, thank you. Thank you everybody for being out there. Uh, we're going to, we're going to start the video. Hope you all have a great day. Uh, good to hear from Dominic today. So prayers were answered. And uh, we are going to start this. And then we are going to be out of here. You oh. What the heck? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Round Oh. Get your weight up, baby. FOA, all the way. FOA Customs and Gear. Custom tackle and fishing gear at an affordable price. Veteran owned, small business, located in South Carolina. Get all your fishing needs at www.foacustomsandgear.com.